This week on RSPM Update, I'm back and I get stuck into the Weapon Diversity Beta. We have thoughts on executing the Comp Cape rework, and we share a cautionary tale of hyping the Bank rework. Plus, some introspection on RSPMB Update and a look at AFK trading methods. This is RSPMB Update, episode 727, recorded Friday, June 7th, 2019. Critical Diversity of Thought. Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us for another episode of RSBNB Update. I am back, and uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed being left in the very capable hands of Tannis and Sirion while I was gone. Do you enjoy enjoy having the house to yourself, the both of you, Tannis? I mean, yeah, it was it was fun, um, but I wouldn't want to do it all the time. I like I like the co-pilot seat. That's that's fine. And even Sarion and together, it still was like it was. It, we we have an appreciation for you, Shane. Yeah. Not too much. Don't get too big of a head. But <laughs> <laughs> we, <laughs> we do we do have a new appreciation for you. Yeah. All right. And, you know, joining us this week is David, uh, our very, very uh, skilled PVM expert, because, you know, we do have to discuss the weapon diversity beta this week. So welcome back to the show, David. Thank you for thank you for being yeah, for here, sure. given the amount of pain that you're in. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm doing OK. Um, thanks for having me on. Yeah. So, you know, let's let's just dive right into this, because. This is something that uh, was talked about, uh, I think, numerous times, and I'm trying to remember when we first heard about this weapon diversity. I think it was probably on one of the surveys that they did, if I remember correctly. And, you know, when it comes down to this, I I think uh, we have to take into account that this is something that was lost with the evolution of combat, because um, when it came down to it, Prior to the EOC, you know, everybody would use a specific weapon for um, a specific task. Like, for example, if you wanted the fastest striking weapon with decent damage, you would use a scimitar, right? Whereas, you know, if you wanted something and you were going PKing that you just needed to get those quick kills in, you would go for the Dragon Dagger because it had that special attack on it that would allow you to get an extra attack in. And yeah. All this was gone with EOC. Yeah, and back in the day, Legacy Slayer, even different Slayer tasks where creatures would be weak to certain styles would uh, cause you to use different weapons. So, for example, I remember Water Fiends were weak to Crush, so people would use inferior weapons uh, in order to do Water Fiends that had a really high Crush bonus, and then that was way better than, say, like an Abyssal Whip or whatever was, was meta back then. So I remember just, like, I had all different types of weapons for doing different types of slayer tasks, which has not been a thing for quite a while. Yeah. And you'd even bring in say a dragon battle axe just to use that special to get the extra strength bonus. Um, you know, right. before you begin. Um, oh, don't mention battle axe. I'm, I'm a little salty. That's the only salty part. I, <laughs> I am right now. <laughs> yeah. Battle axes have pretty much disappeared. Haven't they? They got left out completely. I'm like, how my favorite weapon is what? Yeah. The coolest weapon ever. And y'all didn't do the battle axe? Well, okay. I will say um, uh, that I do use the dragon battle axe back pretty frequently. So, oh, really? so battle axes aren't dead. People, yeah, Oh, yeah, all the time. It's so good. Uh, okay. Use that Solak and Adaraxor. Fascinating. I, I didn't think that its magnitude would be enough at the, at the high end uh, to be worth using still. Yeah, it's uh, most um, most records that you watch. Um, like if someone posts a record on Reddit, and uh, you know you see the video, most of the time you'll see them using a Dragon Battle Axe spec, or they'll have used a Battle Axe spec right before starting the kill because it's a pretty big difference, um, and it's much more consistent for things like one cycling cores at Solak and things like that. It requires you to be like pretty perfect with your rotation because it's okay. such a big adrenaline cost, but it's a huge damage buff. Um, you know, if used at the proper times. All right. Well, this beta came in on June 4th, and it's going to run for an entire month. And I just want to get a couple of um, 
key things out of the way before we begin and talk about if this is your first time playing a RuneScape beta, what exactly it is. What happens is, is that you go to the news post and you click, you click this link on uh, the post and it'll just open up your standard game client, except it will open it up in an entirely different server that has your account copied over and it's completely separate from what you have in the live game. So anything that you do in the beta world will not be reciprocated back onto your live game save and the whole point of this is that you can get a bit of a preview of what's going to be happening potentially with this beta or rather with this weapon diversity update before it arrives and you can use this as a as an attempt to gain uh, pre-release access to it in order to form an opinion and see if you like it see if you don't like it and then um, if needed share your feedback with Jagex and I, I actually need to start off by just saying that, you know, if this is your first time playing one of these betas, you need to be uh, mindful of the fact that, yeah, you know, you're going to be reading lots of stuff online over the next month about how the how the beta works. And that's fine. But we need to also remember that in general, in this day and age, when it comes to RuneScape, there's, you know, probably... Um, two or three central sources where people get their opinions from. And we were talking a bit about this pre-show that it's it's very likely that if you're listening to someone who has an opinion, who, who of course is not on our SBNB update because we here have our own opinions and like to go against the grain. If you're listening to us, that's great. And um, we can guarantee you that we're not going to be repeating the community drivel that you find in various places. So just keep that in mind that what in general the community is saying likely isn't going to be true. So everybody who is listening to this should head on over to the beta world try it out form your own opinions and if you have a legitimate concern with it or any concerns with it you should relay those concerns to jagex in the form in the forum and, and that's the key word in the forum because they actually did set up a forum th- area for this on the on the official website which confounded me because you know normally they say let's put this on reddit or twitter mm-hmm. but lo and behold we actually have a um, a forum for this, a forum topic and an entirely for, uh, separate forum area. So please do um, post there. And when you post, try to be constructive because if you're not constructive, it is, you know, it is miles harder to listen to feedback that is not constructive and try and take it seriously than it is to listen to something that is completely well thought out. And as we've talked about many times before, that's a problem we had with the last big combat change which was the evolution of combat back in 2012 so um do you guys have any opening uh thoughts or ideas before i highlight the first problem with this beta i like that you bring it all the way back to eoc because i think that uh while revolution was probably a bigger more substantial update especially in terms of the way people interact with the game on a daily basis uh it wouldn't be that far-fetched to suggest that uh, weapon diversity, assuming it becomes a full magnitude every single style, not just the, the weapons that are currently um, being being tweaked and worked with, but if every single one got its own unique thing, this it wouldn't be that, that far-fetched to say it's the biggest combat update since EOC. Um, I think it's probably the biggest one since Revolution. Oh yeah, um, definitely on that. But, but yeah, I think, I think that's a good, that, that sort of demonstrates how how crucial this is that this goes well um, to the game's health in the future, sustainability of combat, the general experience, et cetera. Yeah. Now I want to, I want to say that I have no problems whatsoever with the actual implementation of the beta. We can talk about if things are tuned too high or tuned too low later, and we'll get into that. And when I say the implementation, I mean that, you know, you go into the beta server and it works exactly as it should. It's a beta but there's one problem with this news post, and I, no- I noticed that in my first read-through of it. Do you guys know what it is? Um, no, tell me. Tannis, do you know what it is? No. I, I, I didn't catch anything. There's nothing in this news post to convince the player of why this is needed. Yeah, uh, that's true. I, 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 I think that people. I think that maybe part of the problem was that 
when this was first really discussed during one of the game jams, people were so excited about it in the sort of Twitch stream um, or the, tr- the comments that I think that maybe they just took that took it for granted that people were always already going to be hyped about this update um, without and that they didn't, you know, end up talking about it. So, yeah, so yeah I agree. So they say, and this is, is, it comes down to weirdness, and they say, but it, isn't it kind of weird that all these weapons essentially behave the same? Weapon diversity is about fixing that weirdness and making every weapon feel different. What if casting water spells left behind a little puddle of water? What if daggers were so sneaky that they could sometimes hit twice? And I don't know about you guys, but whenever you have to boil something down to weirdness or that's weird as a way of saying or rather describing something, that's not a description. It's definitely not a reason. Um, yeah, it's, 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 it, feels, it feels really generic. Um, I don't know. I, I thought, I think that it feels very much like there's this thing about this game that doesn't feel like other MMOs. We think that that might feel weird, so we want right. it to feel like other MMOs. I'm just like, I don't know. Like, I, that, I'm, you know, I think this, I'm not bashing the update or the idea of oh, it. Oh, no, of course like, not. Like, the idea that, like, it's supposed, it's good because it'll make it feel like other games is silly to me because, like, I would just, I don't know. Like, there's a reason I play this game and not other ones, I guess. And yeah. It's because it feels different. Um, I, I personally believe that the beta needs to happen. And that this update needs to happen. And, you know, I, I think the fact that there is no explanation on here as to why you should care about this and why you should even go check this out is a bit concerning. Well, because I think they were faced with, well, I, I'm probably overthinking this because honestly, I think when it comes to news posts, this is just, they, they didn't know how to write, write it very well when it comes to um, giving that reason. But if it was me, um, and, and this is kind of a risk in of itself, but I would direct people to the fact that, look, when it comes to combat, we've pushed mechanics pretty much to the limit. There's not a lot of room. There's not a lot of space to fill in from there. If you're doing Solak in five minutes, you're badass, and there's what can we do? This is going to allow us to make the make that experience even richer, even better. Um, This is going to allow us to add a whole new layer of mechanics and what you should use or what you should switch to in different situations um, and give that next level of combat a whole new coat of paint. Um, But you didn't hear anything like that. So, yeah, I, I, I agree. I'm much more interested in this update for a very different set of reasons than one you listed. I kind of feel that PVM at the highest levels is already incredibly complicated and difficult to execute to the point that many players feel like it's not even worth attempting to reach that level. Like your articles would, would confirm that. Right. I was going to say like, Mm -hmm. if, if people have read my, some of my recent articles, like there's stuff that is so niche that it like seems absurd that you would even do it. And so just adding more and more and more complexity is something that I'm concerned about. Um, but I, I like this update for a different set of reasons, I guess. Okay. I, I, I'm, I'm nervous that it will be perceived as just making things harder. Um, and so that's the perception that I think that they need to spend the most time uh, pushing back against. Well, I think on the other side of, I mean, on the other side of the coin, you have everyone else that does some kind of combat and it works for them on the exact opposite level because while it adds complexity to the effects that it has, it gives you a choice in your weapons and what you're like, if you're going, this is going to make like the Slayer task actually be more like Slayer task again. Um, by different weapons and different effects. And if you're trying to get through it really quick, like if you're trying to kill Ripper demons really fast, you might want to use the dagger because it's going to be quicker kills. Um, just different things like that, which I think that would be, that would be great to have again too, because I think one of the things when, when they tried to do the Slayer, we ended up with these little 
mini bosses rather than um, <laughs> how it would turn out this time. You know, this time it would feel more like it used to. Um, instead of just walking into your bank and hitting, you know, whatever preset number you have for ranged or whatever, you know, and you can just go kill everything. Okay. You know? Um I'm going to expand on what you said in in terms of why this is important, and it's something that Sirian has talked about a lot about too, and that's player choice. Because if you have a game as it is right now with combat, like you said, you can pretty much just take you know a tier ninety two scythe and go do pretty much any Slayer task, barring the more complicated high leveled ones, and you can just go there and you run through the task, and that's task done. Whereas with this, you're given more choice and particularly how you want to do that. And that's why this update is important to game because this deals with one of the, and this is the case I would have made on the news post is that this deals with one of the key aspects of an MMO and that's player choice. And when we have player choice about how our character looks, when we have character, choice about how what kind of armor we wear and now we're adding on more choice in terms of um the weapons that we use and the potential little passive effects that come with them that's just further deepening the mmo experience and that's what makes an mmo great and that is what the selling point should have been on this is that we're we're running this beta we're going to be enhancing the way combat works going forward and this is going to be offering you the player so much more choice we'd very much like your input on this in order to make runescape your mmo that should have been the case that was made yep that's my opinion on how it should have been marketed now i want to dive a bit into this um and david you said you have your own set of reasons about why you like this update and why you want it to go forward and you know being the resident pvm expert i'd like to hear those before we start going too deep into the mechanics here sure so i i'm particularly interested in this update because i think it provides an alternative to increase engagement with the combat system i've always said and this is a somewhat controversial opinion but i am very convinced that it's true that a lot of the problem people have with combat in this game now is that it seems like either you're all in intense, like four tick auto attacking, full manual, fighting the most difficult things, or you're functionally AFKing with an input every once in a while. But like you could reasonably watch a TV show or work on something or read a book while you're like AFKing Abyssal Demons or something. And I, I feel like this could be uh, a step that allows people to experience the game in a more dynamic fashion without resorting to full manual. So like it, I think it could make revolution player revolution only players uh, experiences a little more interesting. And I also think that it provides a lot of choice for players who are not max and who don't have the money for best in slot gear, because even after this update happens, despite how cool some of these things are, they'll functionally what will occur unless there's big differences from what's happening now is they'll just be a new set of best in slot items and all of the players who are at the highest levels will just use whatever that new setup is. So it doesn't matter what it is really. Um, from my perspective, I'm going to use whatever is best in slot. Money is not a relevant consideration to me. I could just buy whatever gear I need. But I think that for players who are a little lower leveled uh, or who you know don't have that kind of GP, this can give you an experience that is close to a best in slot setup without feeling like you're always having to buy something new. Right. And, you know, when you look at the differences in uh, percentage damage wise, the difference between say tier 85 and tier 90 damage is about 6%, which for a Slayer task really is going to make it uh, feel completed marginally faster, but you're probably not going to notice it that much. Right. Whereas at a high level boss with, the way mechanics work in this game where if you don't hit certain dps thresholds entire cycles of mechanics repeat greatly extending the duration of the of the kill um it makes a huge difference six six percent can make a huge difference so so it kind of depends on on what you're doing but but i do like that that i feel like this could give people something to get excited about in terms of engaging with the combat system making choices um like you were both saying without 
having to go like full manual, which I think at yeah. this point is just and, like a lost battle. And looking at what we have here, it is actually exciting to me seeing uh, the options that are available, barring a couple of them, and we'll get to that. And I think now is a good time to start jumping into this, right? Yeah, sounds good okay. to me. So there's 16 different changes that have been made. And, you know, if you have something like a Nox Scythe, for example, that won't be getting a special added onto it. And I think that's fair because that's one of the most powerful weapons in the game. Same as with um, the uh, um, Saren Godbow, those kind of ones. It already has a special. Yeah, one. exactly. It's just just a, a quick interruption on the Noxious Scythe. Remember, the recent patch notes allowed you to select what distance your character would come back to yeah, we're in terms to of square. Oh, 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 okay, yeah, great. It's in the patch um, notes. Yeah, yeah, that... That to, that that's a really big upgrade for the Noxious Scythe for players who struggle with reading squares. I I kind of like am able to do it just by muscle memory, but for some people they find that difficult. Uh, yeah. And so Araxor is going to be a lot easier for people who struggled with that. Nice. Um, and you know, just confirming from um, what was said this week from Mod Timbo and Mod Shawnee, any weapons that are not mentioned in this news post. Um, are not in the process of having an effect applied and they only have so much development time and have decided to prioritize the weapons listed and their effects. And also with this, for anybody who is wanting to actually benchmark things, uh, they added Rude Metrics Pro to the uh, beta world. So everybody has access to that in there. Oh, that's cool. We, it's almost like someone listened to how to do a better beta. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> we, we have that in there, Shane, remember? Yeah, I remember that now. Okay. Yeah. So starting off with Malie and the daggers, um, this uh, this one goes back to the dragon dagger special um, attack, and this one has a chance to hit twice with every single attack. And when dual wielding, this will apply for both your main and offhand. So what happens with this is that it's going to just be auto attack damage is not going to be ability damage so it's going to be i I guess i guess we can say that this is going to be okay because this is effectively having a chance at what you guys did with a four tick auto attack with a um with like a wand or something right except with molly in this case for a dagger yeah and and clearly you know obviously it's not as good because you know it's like it, you, you aren't able to control it happening, right. but but yes, it's a five it, percent chance right now. They're calling that a conservative yeah, chance. Yeah, it's a play tested. I think it fits right in thematically with daggers. Yeah. I don't think this will be a huge deal damage wise or whatever. Um, but you know, it that remains to be seen. How many attacks per second can you get off? Just out of curiosity. Uh, well, I mean, you're so you're restricted by the Tick global system. cooldown of abilities. Okay. So, so every that's what global cooldown is. Is it three? Is it three sec? Is it two point six I, seconds? I, what is I, it? I don't know. Two point four seconds. Okay. Two point four seconds. I think. So is, four ticks. Uh, global global cooldown. Yeah. So okay. every every four ticks, you're able to do a new ability. Um. So every four game ticks, you'll have a chance for this ability to proc. I'm just running, doing some quick math in my head, and I think 5% is probably going to need to go up because that's not a lot. Yeah, it totally has to go up. But all, but at the same time, like, it's to me, it's not like a disaster if some weapons remain better than others. You know, yeah. like, I, you know, I, I don't know. It, it, I, it I seems. Another purpose. I mean, as long as, you know, like what David was saying about the Water Fiends early on, like, if it has a better. Uh, what is it called? Infinity to another certain monster, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just, I'm just trying to think. We don't really have what's, what's. Uh, let me. I, I should look this up. What, what is the highest tier dagger that we have in the game? Well, so something I was going to look up and I haven't yet is our Ripper claws considered daggers, or are claws distinct from daggers? Claws are distinct from daggers. Yeah. Okay. Well, then the highest tier dagger would. Wouldn't it be the dragon dagger with a wilderness hilt attached? Uh, there's crystal daggers. Is that better than a wilderness hilt dragon? Yeah, I guess it is. Okay, so yeah, so crystal daggers then. Okay, yeah, that'd be the highest tier. Uh, the blade but of Shane, Nomura there's... is a. The blade of Nomura is also a dagger. Um, oh, it is. Yeah, oh, yeah, that okay. one's a tier ninety, but damage of a tier eighty. Oh, really? Weapon. Yep. Oh, interesting. I thought those were short swords. Yeah, okay. Those, those are cool. So I guess that's the highest. I guess that's the answer, though. Well, there you go. Yeah. But 
actually, that question right there is one of the reasons I'm most um, optimistic about this whole update in general, Shane. All right. Well, we're going to need a whole bunch of new weapons and whole new yeah. tiers, and it just so happens we have a new skill, well, a reworked skill, where we could provide things for people yep. like that. Yeah. And fill out all of it. Yeah, and there's also a, there's I'm also an update really coming about. this summer with lots of hidden archaeology based things that uh, could be combined with smithing. I'm not saying that's going to happen, but that would be an interesting path to go down. That'd be so. It'd be so cool if like they did some sort of thing where you can discover or or locate like the ancient hilt of a lost stone dagger or oh, something, man. and then you, you know you could use smithing in order to. Uh, Work on it a bunch of times that. in order That's... to turn it into a better weapon. That'd be that'd be so sweet. I'd love that. And they said there's going to be a PVM style hunter. Uh, okay, I got to quit speculating because, but wow, there there yeah. are some possibilities here. I'm really hoping for some Indiana Jones hunter missions with <laughs> weapon parts <laughs> that you find at the end. Um, I don't know, doesn't that seem cool? I, maybe it does. I don't know. I, uh, I like just, it. Just, uh, oh, it's really cool. Just to get back to the dagger here, the the blade of Nomura from the God Wars two is currently market value 1.2 mil. It has an accuracy value of 2458, damage of 768, which of course is tier 80 accuracy. Uh yeah, tier 80 damage, yeah. Tier 80 damage, right. So Yeah. So for the purpose of this special attack since it does it also attacks the target with auto damage. Mm-hmm. Um it's this. They'll be the same as uh, same damage as crystal daggers as well. But obviously, they're, they'll be better to use if accuracy is relevant. And see, this is a reason. And we're already getting into the heart of this. And you know, people can say they don't like this this update. But if you want this extra little auto attack, it gives a whole new lease to a crystal dagger. And you know, uh, people can say, oh, crystal daggers aren't that good for slayer and whatnot but i think we can agree that tier 80 damage is okay for most slayer tasks yes yeah totally and this is a perfect example like a perfect example of what i'm talking about which is that people who have much lower budgets can feel like they're making a choice that benefits them all right um, which is great well let's move on to the spears then um, bleed effects will last 50 percent longer this this will apply to slaughter blood tendrils and dismember Blood tendrils is an amazing ability. It is. So it's slaughter slaughter's incredible. It's it's one of the best abilities you could possibly use if your target is moving um and large. Uh like at Araxor, it's one of the best thresholds you could possibly yeah. do. You slaughter and then move it. And um, of, of course for spears you got Vestas Superior's Vesta Spear, that's the wilderness weapon, which you can of course easily get now. More, or yep. I shouldn't say Easily, but it's easier to it's get cheap. now. It's super than, cheap. It's than, super cheap. Uh, it used to be. Um, yeah. There's also the, the weapon from um, the spear from Siriu, the tier 85 one combining Siriu's claw with the Siriu's fang. Um, you know, 6.4 mil if you wanted to buy this one. And you see, you see what's happening here. We, you wouldn't think to use these weapons before because they're just there and you just went for whatever is the highest damage, right? But All right, the only time you used a spear was at uh, the big corp. Yep, the big yeah corp. But now, yeah, I'm I'm doing corp right now. Now imagine slaughter, <laughs> blood tendrils, and dismember lasting fifty percent longer by, by using one of these weapons. So and it's two handed so is... as well. So that gives you the best of both worlds. You get those abilities, and you get to use the best AOE abilities, the two handed ones. I think and you could be missing miss and match different. What do you mean mismatched? Like that. Well, I mean you could, um, you know, change. Like you can try to you get to spec on one and then switch to a different, yeah, different yeah. weapon for yeah. that yeah. effect. Spears, basically, this just means the Vesta spear is going to be standard part of every best in slot melee setup. So I'm just going to have to start bringing a Vesta spear everywhere as a switch. <laughs> I mean, so. So uh, to me, to me this is just another weapon switch. Yeah, uh, okay. which I don't love to be honest. Um, but like that's my choice. Yeah, you know? no, one, I, no I, one's. I making think we'll have that. to come back and uh, circle back on that at the end because I think that's going to be the general theme for this. 
Um, but yeah. once again, I want everybody listening to this, if you are a maxed player, to think that, okay, you, you probably have good weapons as it is now, but just imagine you are still leveling up and you're still progressing through the game. There's going to be effectively a more breadth of field that you can focus on, and that is a good thing. And that's what yeah. we've seen so far. Um, next up for scimitars, if you're wielding a sim- scimitar in your main hand slot, 5% of the damage will be applied as a dot damage over time that lasts for 7.2 seconds. And if you dual wield, that is increased to 10%. And this happens whenever you land a critical hit when using scimitars. Ooh. And that means you could have like a scimitar in one hand, a dagger in the other. All right. Yeah. Could, yeah, yeah. Uh, if they ever release tier ninety two scimitars, those will be sweet. I think. Yeah, you can you can play with those on the test server. Is is the dragon scimitar really the highest tiered scimitar we have in game right now? According to I this? think uh, I think you can put a wilderness hilt on it, and then it'll be a higher oh, tier. Array. Okay. Or can you not? Can you not? I'm not sure. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, that that's the highest tier. So this 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 isn't really like a relevant. Uh, no. Well, I mean, I shouldn't say that it is. It, it is, is relevant. it is relevant for lower level players. Um, but it, but in terms of high end, um, and I think most people are probably yeah, like they should have eighty plus. You know, they should have let us make scimitars with the smithing update. You yeah, know, like an elder rune plus five scimitar would have been immaculate sh- in this case. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. So. <sighs> Jagex, can we please have Elder Rune plus five scimitars? Thank you. I'm hoping maybe the new the new island will get like a a high tier machete that oh, will that'd be count something. as a scimitar. That'd be something. Yeah, <laughs> I think I think that'd work out because like it's be jungly, right? You need a machete in the jungle. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Well, and I would need that for my for my outfit. You know, because I already have the whip on the one side and the cavalier. I've got the whole Indiana Jones thing. Yeah, perfect. So then I can get a machete. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love that. I love that. Yeah. Um, so here's how it works. So, for example, if you deal a thousand damage with a critical hit, the damage over time of 100 is applied, and after seven cycles, you deal another 1,000 damage critical hit. Then the damage is refreshed to 12 cycles, and would deal 150 damage over 12 cycles so it can refresh itself um in that regard so like it's not going to be immaculate but it's just going to be something that's going to add on to it uh next up two-handed swords uh when you use these the weapon effect will heal you for a percentage of all critical hits they say perfect for drawn out battles five percent of your critical hit will be applied immediately as a heal to the player um Am I the only one that has a bit of a problem with this one? I'm super happy about this one. Okay. Um, I I, I don't know. This feels What's like the... this is kind of cutting into the Ceridoman God Sword. I mean that 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 weapon's been kind of kind of old news slash dead content for a really long time. Like it's tier tier seventy five. I think we can move on from. When was the release of that weapon? Two thousand seven. Yeah. I think I think it's okay to let go twelve years later. Don't you think? let it go let it go yeah i mean you know zgs needs even more buffs shane (laughs) think about it think about it like this shane it's not getting rid of it it's saying it's so good it should apply to all two-handed swords the the god sword serdo and god sword still goes for 5.3 mil yeah it does i mean it's definitely it definitely could affect the price of it that's for sure Uh Five percent of your critical hit, and the Saradoman God Sword is seventy-five to uh, and restores life points by half of the damage dealt. Okay, yeah, okay, that's fair. But see, it's yeah. perfect for someone like me who is, you know, I'm not trying to necessarily tank. I'm definitely not DPS. I'm trying to survive. Like that's. Yeah. That's great for survivability. All right. To stay alive. Yeah. Melee melee already you're mostly camping a Zero's God Sword at the high end and you know you've got Biting 3 and uh, Grimoire active most of the time so 
Uh, there's a lot of critical hits uh, that you get, so it'll be it'll be a noticeable buff. And the, and part of why I like this is that to me it's very similar to four ticking with blood spells. Okay. Um, so when you four tick auto All attack right. with blood with blood spells, you're getting healed every one of those auto attacks. Um, and and so this will be kind of melee's equivalent to that, I guess. Yeah, and uh, is, as you mentioned, Sorrow's God Sword will benefit from it. And this is something that everybody in the Mining and Smithing rework can benefit from with the Elder Rune plus five two-handed sword. Mm-hmm. Yep. And pretty much every every other tier of the uh, Smithing rework for this, too. So. Mm-hmm. And, you know, see, we're going through this, and we have yet to find a negative, per se, as the community was seeing it. So let's just keep on with this one. And we got the biggest one next, I think, the... Most impactful, oh, yeah. and perhaps most overpowered one here. I think it might be overpowered, but we'll get your opinion on that. Um, and that's the mace. So if you're oh, wielding a mace, two hundred percent of your entire equipped prayer bonus will be added as a strength bonus. So if you have um, a plus ten prayer bonus, that's going to be a plus twenty strength bonus, which is better than most amulets out there. And if you dual wield, this will take it up to three hundred percent. Man. I don't like to say that things are um, overpowered or too good, or you know, because I, I mean, I actually think that, that stuff is fun. Yeah, this is what I would require: is uh, as double D's, Dra- yep. two dragors. No, Shane, uh, David, double well, D's. Uh, you know, I there. It's a great. It's it's a really good effect. Uh, I'm with you. I've been doing a lot of so I've been mostly working on IFB lately. So I've been doing a lot of solo KK. Same final and boss. I keep getting, yeah, and oh, uh, I keep getting oh, Drygore maces oh, from him. Oh my god! What? Well, okay. So you see what's ha- going to happen with this, right? These things are going to shoot up and up. Yeah, and they've up. doubled it. They've more than doubled in price already. Yeah. And see, that's that's another thing I wanted to bring up with the beta. <laughs> It's just a beta. It's just a beta. That might not necessarily be the case. So for anybody out there stocking up and hoarding these Drygore maces, that <laughs> might not end up happening. <laughs> well, I just um, I'm keeping everything in a loot tab that I get from a boss until oh, good. I get the pet, and then I'm selling it all off at once. So I've got like I think I've gotten two main hand maces and one off hand maze all from solos the past week. Right. And um, solo, yeah, you do that solo. It's yeah. a Calfight King. Calfight King's not that hard. Yeah, it's pretty what? easy. You just you just have to you just have to um, not make any mistakes. You, I was gonna say you can't fine. make a mistake, not one. Yeah, if you make a mistake, you die. But you just don't make mistakes. <laughs> okay. Well, of course, if you make a mistake, you die. <laughs> yeah, because well. the green. The, it, yeah, you just have to. It's it's not that bad. You just have to stun it. Stun it on its fourth auto attack during ranged phase and freedom on the correct auto attack during melee phase and then bladed dive out of the way and then either resonance or disruption shield the uh, insta kill. So it's not that bad. But but it does take some getting used to and your DPS has to be pretty high for it to be worth it. Um but yeah, I, maces are wild. Like Drygor the fact that Drygor maces are gonna be way better than Kopesh's uh if this update happens. And I was talking to friends and we were thinking that even in instances where you're not 100% accuracy, it's probably still going to be better to use Drygore Maces over Kopesh's. Oh, yeah. Just because most of the time, uh, at places where you're not 100% accuracy, you're like using affinity buffs like the Stadius Warhammer, Gothic Staff, etc. And, um, and yeah, I mean, it's like a ton of damage. Um, I don't know exactly how I feel about these buffs being so good that a tier 90 is better than a tier 92. Yeah. Um, I should check especially, my bank if I still have yeah. my dry gores. Yeah. Especially like that. It's universally better. Like, I think it's perfectly fine that the spear is better than a Kopesh at bleeds. That's cool. It's very specific. Mm-hmm. It's niche. It's a weapon switch. The fact that maces are better than Kopeshes for all abilities. That's the part I don't necessarily like. I think that, I think that there should be some give and take, um, and I don't think you should be able to jump a tier um, with a, and the lower tier weapon be better in all scenarios. And, and see, well, the, the thing is, is that uh, when it comes to maces, they do have an innate lower damage value. So this seems to be the way 
their way, <clears throat> their way of um, making up for that. Well, you can make up for that, right? Maces always have are always associated with with prayer and stuff like that too, right? Just traditionally, so yeah. you could have something in that in that realm. But I feel like this just goes back to every <laughs> if there's something that they're trying to fix, this would be contrary to that because now I'm just going to carry maces. Everywhere I don't think I so. I don't think so. With that much of a damage boost? I I mean, you would would fly through stuff. I mean, you'd have to, you'd have to, you'd have to maximize it. So you're not putting too much into prayer, but, but I don't have any problem with prayer. You just flip on. No, no, no. Like like the prayer bonus. Because that's what this is governed on, your prayer bonus stat. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, but a lot of the new new best-in-slot armor has prayer bonus with it. I mean, I, if, if the update happens without changes, I guess, like, my Kopeshes will just be cosmetic overrides or something. Because I'll be using maces for everything. Well, I, I think then that's a concern if, yeah. if this is being uh, so impactful that it would... Um... That it would, you know, effectively make you use maces in pretty much every scenario. Then I think yeah. that is being overpowered. Um, I imagine they'll. Have you done any? A little bit. I, I don't know, given your foot problem, but have, have you done any bossing on the beta server this week? I haven't done bossing on the beta server. I've just been. I just did some DPS dummies. You know what I think would be a fun thing to do and re- report back on. You can tell me, and I can report back on it next week. Is sure. build a build a new loadout for a boss. Just pick a boss and center it around maces and prayer bonus, and see how it goes. That might be a good idea. All right, we'll get out yeah, the I old dragon that, yeah. ar- dragon rider armor. Huh? That's still the highest prayer bonus, isn't it? Is it is it is it that or pr- proselyte? I, I mean, I can't imagine like it would be. A oh, I wonder if it's to power it's, armor. Superior void, we have voidscape again. Oh no, I don't think so. <laughs> Let's not go back there. Because, because the, I mean, it, it'll still masterwork will still be the best by far. Uh huh. Like no, nothing will come close. Uh-huh. To that. Tr- trim masterwork will be the best armor. And tr- they even added a prep bonus onto trim oh. masterwork. Yeah, they do have yeah, a player exactly. bonus. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, there, okay, it, it's yeah. a it's a it's a substantial prayer bonus. I think if you're for, for trim. <laughs> so no, I yeah. forgot. <laughs> Plus 11 prayer bonus. If you're dual wielding maces, that's plus 33 strength. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah, no. Well, yeah. So so what I was talking about assumes you're wearing full trim masterwork. That's that's what makes maces better. (laughs) There you go. (laughs) Which is... I I had no idea the magnitude. Like, I knew they added a prayer bonus, but I, you know, when you do the math, holy crap. Yeah, it's like wearing a whole extra plate body of power armor. For like no reason, it's, it's so incredible. With this masterwork be- effectively becomes power armor with the <laughs> yeah masterwork is like god tier armor uh, with this update. Sweet. I better start making masterwork. Well, I mean, it is already power armor, but you just I well, don't... yeah. I'm just making fun of people that are <laughs> you know. I can't decide if this is a good thing or a bad thing if it's too overpowered. If I lean towards overpowered, it's probably overpowered, Shane. Okay. Okay. Because I'm the last person to ever want to admit that. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Well. Wow, indeed. Okay. Well, let's move on to the next one then uh, in this list, and those are the those are malls. Um, once again, I think this one's geared uh, towards more uh, lower leveled crowd. I think because I don't know what we have for malls at the high end, um, but with this uh, with a mall, you get plus five tiers of damage, but minus five tier of accuracy. So if you had a tier 90 maul, it would have the accuracy of a tier 85, but the damage of a tier 95 weapon. This, this I think, will be really nice for lower level players doing Slayer. Yeah, that was my thought, um, too. With a chaotic maul. Mm-hmm. Um, chaotic maul. Um, I think that's the highest. Yeah. 
Uh, no, Annihilation. Degradable, two-handed, tier oh, 87. Yeah. Oh, that's the 87. Oh, yeah, yeah. That been, I didn't realize that was available from Slayer. Yeah, yeah that went up in price. I forgot about that. That went up in price so much. It's so expensive right now. It, like, doubled. <laughs> there, oh, my God. Nothing should have happened to prices, people. Well, you know how it goes, <laughs> Like, though. you're mind-screwing yourselves. <laughs> like, well, so, nothing should have happened. Drygore maces were like nine mil on the GE, and now they're like twenty seven mil on the GE. It's pretty funny. People oh, geez, that kind of makes me want to sell them. Shit. <laughs> I mean, hey, if you want to take take advantage of people's stupidity, because I mean, looking at this, I think it's definitely going to get changed. I don't know about you guys. Yeah. I'm not partial to one Drygore over another, man. I don't care if I can make. I, I always preferred the thirty mil stars. off of this. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, it's all the same to me. And hey, if you want to do Wilderness Slayer, you can get potentially the highest damage bonus in game with this, if it stays as is. Yeah. So, and we and all that, know, but that, and we all know, tier eighty two accuracy you know. is going to be good enough for Slayer, right? And that might even be good enough for some bosses like Araxor, right? Well, actually, how does that work with the boss that accuracy doesn't isn't playing a, a part that you're hitting 100 percent of the time, uh, right? Like hit 100 percent of the time, regardless of your accuracy. Yeah, isn't that um, that's one of the new ones, right, David? One I thought uh, that was Solak, wasn't it? The one, yeah, that is, yeah, that's uh, what. That's, I think that's what it is, right, David? That's Solak, well, where accuracy doesn't matter. Yeah, I mean, well, y- accuracy matters. Like it, it does matter in the sense that you couldn't like take a tier 50 weapon there, but right. but accuracy is way way less impactful. Uh, than than it almost anywhere of course. Else that is at the same level. Yes, you're you're 100 accuracy without an accuracy boosting aura using tier 90 weapons. So yeah. So you definitely won't take your mall out there. Yeah, yeah. You, I, I'm not sure what the number would be like with a mall, but I can't imagine that it's. Well, I don't know. I mean, I'd have to. I'd have to see. That's one thing I have to. I'll do some research on and figure out if. Uh, the obliteration will be a good Solak weapon. Um, it's hard to imagine it would replace the ZGS, though. And if you want to see something else, they do oh. have a tier 92 mall in the uh, beta server that you can play with. Cool. And I like every, everything that, that works thematically. I really enjoy. And so this is another one that I think really works well Yeah. with the mall yeah. because you're going to hit something hard, but you're probably going to miss once in a while. So I think in summary. Slower. So I think in summary, from Mali, the only one that we really have a concern with with the, being overpowered is the mace. Um, yeah, and it, but we're at a point where that's that's okay. That's not a big deal. Beta just started. Yeah, we're just and reporting on that that's essentially. Right. That's right. Know? Um, and for underpowered, I think. You know, just based on some quick numbers I did in my head, you're going to need to do, you know, it's going to be like probably like 1 in 20 or 1 in 30 attacks for the um, special to activate on the dagger. So, so yeah, probably want to tune that up tune a little up, bit. I think. You know, which is, I mean, this is exactly what beta is for. Yeah. <laughs> what, this is why they do them. Yeah. All right. Um, so moving on into ranged, and you know, I, I think ranged is one that we needed to pay a lot of t- attention to, because you know, as it is, as we know, um, at at the high end game, it is magic that dominates. So let's see if um, although that's that's getting it's become very very close. That's okay. prior to prior to this stuff. If none of this stuff happens. Uh, you could reasonably make an argument to use ranged over magic. I have a strong preference for magic, but damage wise, ranged has gotten a ton of boosts the last year or so. All right. Well, let's dive in. Uh, short bows are going to be the short range weapon, so much so that if you stand closer to your target, you'll get a damage boost. So short bows will deal 6% more damage, but you get minus 1% damage for each tile distance away between you and your target. So, for example, if you were three tiles away, you would be dealing 104% damage. But if you were in melee range, you would be dealing 106% damage. But if you were seven tiles away, you would just be dealing 100% damage. 
So short bows are designed to increase as you get closer uh, to the target in terms of damage. Um, and, you know, I don't think we have any short bows at the high end, so I don't know if this is going to impact you at all for PVM. You know, I wish that I now wish that they had never increased the range of the Saren God bow, and obviously yeah. now it's considered a charge bow. But right. oh my goodness, what if, if that was a short bow? Whew. I thought because most of the time, like you yeah. don't need to be at distance to fight any bosses in the game, really. Like there's a few examples where you do like Nex, um, but like or Virago, I guess. But for the most part, you could like be in melee distance is fine. Yeah. Um. Apparently, the Zarite bow is considered a short bow. Right, but but not a relevant damage. Not relevant, I guess, compared to... I was to wondering what, would, what happens with the Hex Hunter in this. Is that a short bow? Uh, I don't... I don't and then what the way that it works anyway? But that's the... that's a really that's a really good question because the Hex Hunter is spectacular in certain instances. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is considered a short bow, um, so is yeah, it? that's a huge. Yeah, no, that's is. really really good. There's only a few okay. places where it's excellent, um, but yeah, I would expect the hex hunter bow to go up a little bit because there's a a few bosses where it really shines. And I mean, hey, even if you were just wanting to use a bow and arrow, and you needed a weapon to use, this would be good enough, even though it is pretty expensive. So. Yeah, but but at places like um like if you're getting into raids or something it's it's incredibly good at yakamaru okay um and and like there, and, there, and there's some other you know other places where where it's really quite good as well all right um shield bows will uh reduce the cost of defensive abilities to cost 20 percent less adrenaline to use so 40 percent for thresholds and 80 percent for defense ultimates yeah, that's also really interesting. So I guess you take one of these instead of a shield now. Yeah, you could. Um, I'm. I imagine that there are still going to be some places where the extra time of a vengeful is going to be more useful. But there's totally going to be. Uh, there's totally going to be stuff where the strike bow is just totally. It's just sick because it's like you know a shield bow, and you can um, still do damage while maintaining. While while saving a lot of adrenaline, so all right, so that's kind and of interesting. We are focusing on the high end right now, but of course, shield bows all the way up uh, the line, even the dark bow, and um, I didn't mention the short bows, but pretty much any bow at, at, as you level up is a short bow. So these are two benefits that are you know continuing to add to choice. So I think these two effects that they have for these first two bows are all right. Yeah, I'm pretty mm-hmm. into the second one in particular because it really gives. It really makes you consider like kite shield versus uh, versus shield strike bow, bow at, yeah. at the high end. Yeah. Um, so right. I'm, I'm like – I like that. Um, one-handed crossbows, they're branding these as the speedy rogue type weapons. So when you use them, you'll have a 2% chance while using a basic ability to use the same basic ability at the same time or one tick after and it will not generate adrenaline. Yeah, I think this is too good. I, I think this should be replaced with the dagger special where it does an auto attack. Um, I think it's too good yeah. that it does another ability. Yeah. There's too many Because they could have done the same base. thing like this with the dagger, right? They could have given the yeah, same special. Yeah, right. Like I, the fact that you could use snipe and then get an immediate snipe right after is absurd. It's like getting a free snapshot in. I, I don't huh. – I'm, I'm not a fan. I think it's too good. Okay. Um, even though – well, it is yeah. only 2%, but – I'd rather it be less good but more consistent, if that makes sense. Yeah. I agree. It gives you more reason. It, uh, it just goes along with choice because if it's not high enough, then no one's ever going to choose to do it because what's the point? It rarely well, happens. But we also well, need to look at what the current one-handed crossbows are in the game. Yeah, but the problem with that, Tannis, is that you're already using a one-handed crossbows everywhere. Blightbound crossbows are, are where you're using the vast majority of your – your ranged attacks with so this is just oh, okay. it's not like that da- so daggers no one no one uses daggers but you might choose to use a dagger if the ability is intriguing this is just a lossless free just buff it's not like 
it's not like you're, oh, now I'm going to use Blight Bounds or now I'm going to use Ascensions. You, you are already using those if you are using Best in Slot range. So this is just a totally free, lossless, costless buff for, for no – I got gotcha. you. Know, there's, no down, there's no downside to it And whatsoever. let's not forget how many people right. also have Ascension crossbows out there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and so – and Ascension, same thing. Like most people who are ranging are usually using either Ascensions or Blight Bounds for the vast majority of their range damage because Bacramental Bolts are so good. Okay. I am good with that assessment. Uh, two-handed crossbows are unwieldy and heavy, and they need to stay that way in-game. So standing still with a two-handed crossbow will grant an accuracy buff that will remain as long as you are standing still or will refresh after moving and standing still for three seconds. It's this a is five, right up my alley, too. Accuracy buff. <laughs> the less I have to move, you're going to give me a buff? Yay. 5% accuracy buff. Oh, it's accuracy? I'm thinking of damage. No, it's yeah. accuracy. So yeah. this is things like the Eldritch Crossbow, the Wyvern Crossbow, the Royal Crossbow. Um, you know, I, I I couldn't see where the accuracy boost was coming in. I had to assume it was just going to be passive. Because I did try this with my Royal Crossbow, but I didn't see anything on my character when standing still. So I don't know it if it's... be passive then. Yeah. It would be nice to see it. I, th- I think this is fine. Um, I, I think that the Elders Crossbow is super good, for sure. But the places where the Elders Crossbow is OP um, are places like Nex, and you're moving around constantly there. Um, but but it, it, this is definitely like pretty good for I, if you wanted to range Telos, it'd be pretty good. Um, and while you do have to move around a fair bit at Virago, it's like pr- it could be pretty good there too. Um, so those are the few places i would imagine you'd use it oh and then uh yeah i I guess those two um there's just not that much content anymore that you're not 100 percent accuracy for yeah but i mean it does give them kind of a niche and i think everybody has a royal crossbow at this point probably so at least anybody yeah for sure has uh wanted to dabble in the tier 80 plus uh ranged weaponry so I think this is an example of another weapon where it'll be super nice for lower level or yeah, mid-level exactly. players. Exactly. And, you know, that's something we've kind of strayed away from in this. We started low level, but um, focusing in on the low levels yet again, you can, of course, craft low level crossbows as you go through. So um, it's going to be good for anybody leveling up. So this is, I think, fine. Uh, throwing knives. This is a blast from the past all the way back to pre-EOC. Um, they, of course, have a lower base damage and accuracy. However, using them knocks 0.6 seconds off of the global cooldown. So one tick. They're speedy but weak. And minus five levels in weapon damage and accuracy, but the global cooldown is now only 1.2 seconds rather than 1.8 seconds. And they say, so a level 70 throwing knife would have the at least level 65 accuracy and 65 damage value. See, I I still don't see myself ever using these. We need what? Why? What's the case to actually use them, David? Well, so so I don't see myself ever using them either. But I do like it just because of nostalgia. Like I don't know if you were around in the days where the meta for training ranged, um, because most people like couldn't afford to chin, um, and I was one of those. So the way I got 99 ranged was Iron Knives yep. at Yaks. Yep. Um, and so this is just like a throwback. Like this just makes me smile when I see it. I, I don't think it's useful like at all. Um, maybe it's good for low level training. I have no idea. Um, but, but it, it, you know, makes me smile. So that, that's good enough for me, I guess. So it's, it's a weird reason to like it, but <laughs> it, I don't know. <laughs> it's fair enough. Nice. Um, and you know, there's also darts, but they left those out kind of the same yeah. kind of weapon. Yeah, those got left out. Um, throwing axes, they say in real life throwing axes is a high intensive activity. <laughs> Do they test that? I want to see I want to see the video of Shawnee. <laughs> I want to see like Shawnee trying each one of these weapons, you know, and then like like reporting back what his findings are. It's like, "Oh yeah, throwing axes is kind of hard, you know." <laughs> 
Um, when you use your throwing axes, you'll gain more adrenaline on your basic attacks, and you currently gain 2% adrenaline on an auto attack with your main hand and 1% with off hand. And when you use throwing axes, this will be increased to 4 and 2% respectively. I might try them while leveling up on but, on my okay. other character. I was going to say, but why? And then leveling up, right? So... Mm. Well, yeah, I, and, I don't. And, I don't know about this one. I I don't really get and why it you know would be once again, helpful. low level weapon choice, right? Yeah, I mean you're you can't get yeah. high. See, this was a weird one though because you can't get higher than the dragon throwing axes. No, but it's no, locked there's behind. More, so there's Morgans much. and Superior Morgans throwing axe, which is tier eighty five. What's Morgans? Where's that come from? Wilderness. Wilderness. It's been around for a long time. Yes. Yeah. Really? It's like the Vesta stuff. Yeah. Yeah, forever. Yeah. Well, Morgans, Vestas, Stadius, and Zerial. Those are the four, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah they're throwing. The oh, okay. Mm-hmm. So you can get yeah, a so superior throwing one. axes and and um, javelin javelins. Is it? I believe yeah, it's javelins. javelins. It's another one. Yeah, oh. which used to be, which are kind of cool. They they take away your opponent's run energy, so they're they're like good for like. Preventing people from running away at PvP or something. For the three people that PvP in RS3? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I didn't even know those existed. I Oh, well, you learned something I, today. Eh? I did. <laughs> totally. Well, you know, this is my weak suit, right? I mean, I don't... Well, they're, they're just here, and I mean, there's really not much I guess to say about these. They're just in there for a little bit of nostalgia, I guess. I don't see anybody using those in... In real life, or rather, in in the real game, unless they, you know, unless we <laughs> in real life, <laughs> yeah, unless, unless we uh, somehow wind up. Uh, uh, no, the, to- the tomahawk is in. coming back. Shane. <laughs> <laughs> it's making a comeback. <laughs> oh, that'd be great. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Well. Um, let's move on to magic. I, I don't think we had too many, uh, revelations there from ranged, except for the fact that the one handed crossbow one's perhaps a bit too powerful. Um, now magic wise, I just feel like they have kind of glossed oh, over. Sorry, th- before we move on, sure. I just want to say, I think that, um, if something I mentioned on the discord is a lot of your takeaway from this update, I think ro- relies entirely on whether or not you think the problem it's trying to fix were in fact problems. So I think that if you thought that magic being as good as it is relative to the other styles is a problem, then the recent updates plus this update, if it goes in as stated, will solve that problem. Like and, I think that range see, I don't will even, be right there with magic. I don't even see that as what this is trying to fix. This is trying to increase the breadth of the combat system at the mid levels and the bonuses for the high level people is just that a bonus. That's the way I see this update. Yeah, total totally reasonable, but I think that um it's interesting. This this whole update is is in some ways a, a very interesting balance against four ticking because uh, you'll be able to achieve the same if not greater damage at the high end using ranged um as you would four ticking perfectly. Okay, so maybe the ranged one isn't too powerful then. Um, may, well, well, the crossbows are shorter than the little crossbows. It, it are. depends. I I don't know. I think it might be slightly too good, but I think that. But again, like I don't know. I'm not a balancing person, so so I don't I don't think it's terribly unbalanced. I just think all right. It just it just difference. struck me as a little bit too good. Right. Well, there's a big difference between an auto attack and a ability. Right. You know? Yeah. Like snipe. Snipe hits about. 8,000 damage if you crit inside of a death swiftness. And so to me, getting like the chance to get a, f- a lossless free extra 8k seems like a lot. That's all. All right. Fair. Uh, magic wise, uh, as we mentioned, these ones are going to be a bit subdued compared to the rest of them. So air spells, uh, every hit will increase your armor by 1% up to 10%. Yeah, I mean, not cool. not relevant. What was that, David? N- not relevant to me at all. Um, I think that a lot of people feel like defense matters, and it just like I don't know, it just like doesn't. 
the the best defenses hit hard. Okay. Um, yeah. And f- like learning how to soul split flick and hitting hard is the best defense. So. Okay. Yeah, this isn't that relevant. Uh, for fire, five percent chance when hitting anything to activate a second combustibility. It will act exactly like the player's combustibility, and what this means that any ability that affects combust, like the invention per lunging, also affects the second combust. And if the effect triggers again before the second combust expires, it refreshes the duration back to full. I'm um, guessing that's heavy. Yeah, fire spells will just be the will replace air. So currently, everyone just uses air spells because it's the cheapest. Um, now everyone will use fire spells. There you go, Shane. Go do some room crafting. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how I feel about that one. I mean, do you think that's needed? I, like, based on what I've been told, I don't think it is. Well, so, I, I mean, arguably there's a trade-off, right? So if you're using the normal spell book currently, you just bring Airs, Chaos, Soul, so one rune pouch. Um, this will require you to also bring fire runes, so you're getting like a slight damage buff in exchange for one less inventory slot to work with. Um, so if you think about it that way, it's 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 not there's not not a trade off for using it. Um, right. and it doesn't seem too overpowered or anything. I I think it's just meant to be like a cool fun effect. Is it is it slight or I always thought combust was a pretty significant ability, isn't it? Uh, it's a magic yeah. basic. Yeah. Oh, it's, it is it's a basic. Good. Yeah. It's okay. good. It's it's good, but it's not. I don't think it's. If the target moves, that's the one where they suffer two times the damage. Yeah. Yeah. So if the, your target's moving, it could be quite good. I mean, it, don't get me wrong. It's like it's like nice. It, it's definitely. It will definitely be worth bringing fire runes to use it. Um, but I don't okay. think it's like some huge overpowered thing. All right. Um, water spells when dealing the killing blow with a water small, a water spell, a small globule of water will be left behind. And with this, um, when the player walks onto the tile where the water globule is, the globule is removed and the player is healed for 2% of their max health. Um, the, I also don't really see too much of a use for this, except like maybe if you're slightly lower leveled and, uh, doing Slayer, like maybe you struggle to stay alive for a long time at Abyssal Demons, and this will like get you through the task without needing food, something like that. Yeah, this is another one of those like a survivability kind. Because yeah. David's right that's when good. it comes to hitting hard, it's the best defense. But I'm just not capable of it, so I have to try to stay alive somehow. You know, like I, I can never make up for what I lose with from just the split it or you know all right stuff like that and finally earth spells when your target is thunder bound you will deal 20 percent more damage to them yeah um so i this is just like a huge effort switch for people who want to greatly improve their tell us kill times um or go for records i'm sure that as soon as this is released someone will break We'll break the Telus record. Um, that's kind of the main boss that is super high end that is stunnable because um, most bosses are immune to some right. stunning. But, but yeah, so like doing rack, like this, yeah. So like a stun into rack will be like wild damage. Um, but at the same time, you'll be using fire spells for everything else. So um, if I could talk for a second about yeah. macros, yeah. I know we have in the past. Yeah. Um, I think this is an. an this to me is going to become a commonly used macro for a lot of PVMers, um, where they'll just have a macro that, as soon as they cast a stun ability, it'll automatically switch spells to an earth spell for their next ability, and right. then switch back to fire spells. Have, we, I, heard, I, you know, and, and, have and we heard anything? As a caveat, like that's obviously not. Yeah, have we heard anything on Jagex about using you know like mouse macros and whatnot? Uh, as far as I know, we haven't heard anything. Um, I don't use macros cause I'm scared of like yeah. losing 15 years of right. account progress, but and, you know, um, if you look at any other MMO macros are accepted world of Warcraft and whatnot. Um, absolutely. And I think they sh- I think they absolutely should be, um, 
for this game as well. I think the combat system is complex enough to warrant it. But there's about three macros that are currently super commonly used, and I've written about them in articles. Um, my guess is that this will become a very popular macro um, because I can't imagine outside of like record attempts getting used to doing this. Although I'm sure, you know, I'm like a maniac and will probably force myself to, <laughs> to learn this anyways uh, for my Telus kills. Once I finish, if I finish Insane Final Boss and go back to camping Telus again, I'll probably force myself to learn this. Yeah. All right. So that's pretty much everything on here. Um, you know, not too much that's underpowered, only a couple that are overpowered, I think. And, you know, when it comes down to it, I think the thing that was missed in the news post, and just reiterate this, is that this is about expanding player choice, especially at the mid levels, because the high levels already have a choice about, you know, what kind of weapon you use, whether you're using a Nox or, you know, a Zaros God Sword or whatever it might be. You already have that choice at the high end. Um, but this just effectively takes it from a narrow choice in the mid tiers and expands that out so that there's more breadth, I think. And I think that's what was, was the general sense that was missing from this as to you know i saw a lot of reaction on this that the players didn't like what they saw here and i don't understand how that could be um i think that i kind of get it i think that there's what you talked about in the beginning how there it wasn't well explained in terms of what the reason for this is um i think that people felt like the fact that the beta uh, came with so many bugs. I think the fact that this news post started off very different and a lot of the explanation was incomprehensible. Like if you if you read it now, it's been edited at least a few times, I think, yeah. from its original text. Yeah. And so if you just read the original text and then didn't return to it, you would have been perplexed by what the point is, what a bunch of the things does. It, like it really was not written well at all, um, unfortunately. And that's a shame because I think that that has – first impressions, you know, there are a lot. And I, I think that's definitely hurt the perspective of this. The second problem is I think people feel like this will be released in batches because not all no, weapons are included no, and no, people no, are no, sour no, no. You can't do on that. batch content. Um, you got to deliver this as one big update. Right. And then uh, – yeah. And, and then I, I also feel like – People wish that this was implemented slightly differently, um, partially because of nostalgia for how things used to be. Like, I think people would rather more bosses released that are like Corp, where, you know, I don't, you know Corp, you do 50% damage, but if you use a spear, you do regular damage. Like, I think it would have been perhaps more interesting if, like, every elite dungeon boss, for example, required you to use a different weapon. Um, that so That, the, that would have been interesting. Yeah, so be, but, they basically they play more with the concept of affinity and giving. Maybe you give a boss like a specific phase where you have to like land a certain number of hits within a allotted time frame. So having a dagger for the extra autos would be a huge boon. I don't know. Um, I, I think people just think there was there's cooler ways this could have been done, and then a lot of it just feels like lossless power creeps. So like the crossbows which are already the best range weapons, just getting a lossless buff and power magic, getting a lossless buff and power functionally, you know, one inventory slot um, isn't really that big of a deal. Yeah, I agree. Um, dry gores. Dry, and, the, and the other problem with, is with melee is ultimately, other than the spear as a weapon switch, um, and people are already tired of switch scapes, so other than the spear as a weapon switch, the only relevant change from the perspective of a top end pvmer is the maces switch because the maces are best in slot everything else is totally irrelevant now that's like a limited perspective and a poor perspective and that's why i started the what we were our discussion at the very beginning with i think it's crucial to focus on this update as for mid-level players not for high-end players yep, but i think so too. For, for high end for the purpose of high-end players this update is power creep for no reason and is not in fact going to increase diversity it's just going to be you swap out your copeshes for maces and you bring an extra melee switch and and that's all and you switch air spells to fire spells those three things so air to fire 
Kopesh to Drygors and a spear switch, and that's all it does. Okay, so then when you put so it that is- way, you can start to see why there might be some concerns from it from the folks that you deal with. Uh, but that's day-to-day. yeah. That that's there is no way to keep that from happening when you don't have a class system to begin with. Like, sure, I mean, I, I I get I get that that's not like the point of this update. I'm I'm personally not complaining, right. but. If I put my, like, I'm a high-level PVMer and only care about that hat on, this update does very little to interest me on on, on my specific play style. And it just adds more switches to it, so you can see why. Um, you know, if you looked at that one certain website where people were bitching and moaning about that. So. Yeah, or even if you if you read one of my articles, you could see one of the recent ones. I kind of show off what my switches look like. Um, and I'm already at like, you know, 15 different things or whatever. So it's just like, I don't know, like now I have to bring another thing like that. That's not that fun. Um, <laughs> so and, and, you see, and you see that that's a conversation that took root, whereas the conversation we just had for the last hour, I don't think anybody's had that yet. Yeah, I don't no. think so. And, and I think that our previous conversation is the correct one. I just like, yeah, the last couple of minutes, I just wanted to ex- sort of give the reason behind why oh, yeah, I think definitely. I, people I think it's feel yeah. justified both sides in their complaints. Uh, I think oh, definitely. I mean, that's why it, that's why I was looking forward to having David on the show because I know um, I know that this conversation has been happening in the to us it's in the background, but everyone else is very much in the forefront. And I and I'm looking at this as like, oh, is making the game better and conveniencing you, Mr. One Percent. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, I have no sympathy whatsoever, and maybe I should, but I don't. And and I immediately retracted to that corner once once the divisions were set. I'm like, oh, okay, well, here's my team. I'm with the 99. You know, I can't do this stuff. I don't pff, an extra switch. <laughs> okay, whatever. Um, I ain't switching in the first place, yeah. but um, but um, it's valid. I mean, I'm not saying it's not like valid because I guess we all play this, you know. Yeah. Um, um, there, you know, there's less than one page of posts in the Weapon Diversity Forum on this. There's 21 posts in the bug thread and 50 in the feedback thread, and the first one and the first post in the bug thread, just to give you an idea of what uh, people are saying on this are that maces and throwing knives do significantly more damage than other weapons of their respective tier and style. Maces are two times the damage, even without prayer bonuses, and knives are three to four times. And you see, Throwing knives? We just said that I that's know, crap. I know, and this person obviously doesn't have a point on this, and <laughs> that, that's not a bug. That is as uh, intended right now, currently. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, I mean, to be fair, there, there there was a lot of bugginess on the release of the beta. One of my favorites is one of my friends who's like a quite good PVMer. He has a lot of the current world records for some bosses. Logged into the beta to test with me, and his account was level three, and all of his stats were at one. Yeah, there's a there's a thread for that too. <laughs> Which is, it's not like Oops. terrible. It's just like kind of it's kind of hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> So I was, like, I was like, let's go duo Raga with these new weapons. He's like, uh, I'm level one. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Well, I think that's a good summary of the weapon diversity beta, and we can move on to the other um, RS news we have. And I'm, I'm sorry if this took too long for anybody, but we had to just get through this. So, Yeah, um, it was the major update. It was the great. major update. We, we, so well, much I mean, so had, so much so that I don't even I don't even know if it's worth mentioning the patch notes, but I will. Um just a few of them on here. Monster Examine now gives you the correct XP and plays an animation each time it's cast. Yeah, we talked about that last week. Hair pin dropped. Um mm-hmm. Robust Glass once again defaults to crafting potion flasks instead of ogre flasks. Added a toggle for the color overlay when skills are boosted or drained in the skills tab. Ooh, toggle. I like toggles. Give me a toggle. Improved messaging on the Wilderness Slayer tasks. Streaks to denote when you'll start earning Slayer points. The bank cleanup filter will now display items that can be stored in the quest storage chest. Oh, thank you. I know. That's a good one. That is a good one. 
Um, now here's the big one and perhaps the biggest patch note of the week. It is now possible to set the distance of your currently equipped weapon as the maximum target distance. So correct me if I'm wrong here on this, but the way I interpret this, David, is that you can set a distance on your weapon so that it will only target things within a certain range, correct? Yeah, yeah, something like that. And and I haven't used it yet, but I hear that it's nice for maintaining the proper distance at, at bosses where you don't want to be in melee distance. Interesting. Um, which I think Araxor is probably the most notable right. example. So you could um, set the distance and then run away and your character won't immediately run back. Right. Um, oh, that's Vir- good. Virago is, as well, um, which, is, which is nice. Okay. And players will now have um, a significantly improved chance of obtaining the Slayer skill pet from squashing scarabs in Menaphos. Squash them. Okay. You were going to say something else about the uh, range of weapons, weren't you, David? Oh, ju- just in case, you know, for those who don't know, the reason it's relevant is that at certain places you want to be two squares away with your scythe. And because when you run, the way running works is you just take two squares at a time instead of one. Um, you can, if you, if you don't run an odd number of squares away, when you run back to the boss, like if you use an ability on it and your character runs back, you'll run back straight into melee distance. Um, and so that can cause some problems. And so this will, will make it much easier for players to stay two squares away. Aha. Uh-huh. Okay. You know, I think this would have helped me when we were doing some of those elite dungeons. Yeah, potentially. Potentially it could have, yeah. Yeah. All righty. Um, we ready to uh, get muddy and dirty again? Ooh, shame. Comp Cape Rework Dead Blog number four. <laughs> boss fight music yeah. tracks are now going to unlock at the beginning of boss instances. And they'd also like to make it clear that there are plans to add additional requirements to the two comp capes. Once the rework goes live, there will be a one-month grace period for players to obtain the extra achievements before they lose their capes. These include the Been There, Done That achievement for the comp cape, as well as Sandy, Salty, E-I-E-I-O, and also work on an updated uh, work on your artisan achievement for the trimmed comp cape oh, oh, oh and future trim. editions <sighs> oh not. enjoy that salty title you're gonna be a yeah. lot of trim saltiness around <laughs> <laughs> i'm working on E-I-E-I-O at the moment it's a lot of work yeah i completed chinchampas rabbits and what else did i complete and zygomite so far and i I just need a royal dragon to complete dragons. I can help you with that if you need. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll ask you. Yeah. Um, also with this, they want to say how the new comp cape will work. And every significant content update will have at least one new comp requirement and at least one new trim requirement. The only reason is new requirements won't be added or if the content update is so small that there really isn't anything to create the requirements from. Ninja fixes if the nature of an update doesn't lend itself to the requirements like limited time events or if there's a strong reason why the new requirements shouldn't be added. Examples include impact on the economy would be too large, the game would be disrupted in some way or it would create a too high dependency on luck. Well, I know the EIEIO has sort of affected the economy. Like, um, I went to World 2 Player Own Farm today to buy, like, perfected um, mated pairs of different animals with, like, all the max perks or I don't, what do you, what would you describe them as? Traits? Yeah, yeah max traits. Max traits, traits for, like, the best chance to breed okay. Chinese. How much do those go for? I spent, like, so I bought a perfect mated pair of the jackalopes for 25 mil. Um, I bought a perfect mated pair of spiders for like 30 mil. I bought zygomites for like 20 mil. I probably spent like 100 mil on animals today at the player owned farm. You know, I might have a future in that now that you mention it. <laughs> yeah, like, royal, wow. uh, perfect mated royal dragon pairs were going for like 60 mil. I have one of those. Um, in World 2. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it's, <laughs> there's this, uh, this mercher is doing this thing. So he added me after I bought a bunch of animals for him. 
and so he's buying all of his all of the animals back from people he sells them to at like a 50 percent rate and i might end up doing that so i don't have to bother with like trying to find a buyer <laughs> so it's pretty funny so he's that's great. Uh, to, to PVMers with cash stacks to burn. I guess like that's that's really how scalers can make money is you just like take advantage of PVMers who are too lazy to like <laughs> do the thing. <laughs> you know, I never thought of using the farm like that for money making, but you know, with some time I could get another couple pairs of those royal dragons um for mating and whatnot and that would be interesting. Hmm. Okay. Um also, I just want to make one other note. I just remembered something that I saw in chat uh, earlier this week on the beta. Um, and I think I might have mentioned this in passing in some way or not. But I just need to say that because it's a beta doesn't mean that if enough players complain, it won't come into game. That's not <laughs> what betas are for. I just had to uh, throw that out there. But in any case, um, there's that. And... Um, I think we can go into the June month a- or month ahead because the comp cape rework is coming this month. Yeah. With the uh, profound halo for people who have completed the previous profound achievement from Castle Wars. Well, you know they said that it wasn't much. I know. When it comes to developing it was it was and, you know. You know, that's so. one of the things that's drawing lots of criticism too is that um it's seeming like it's just a simple fix now. But in reality, you can have updates that are simple to implement like this one, but have huge amounts of work that go into the design process for them. That doesn't reduce the impact of the update. So I just wanted to right. no, bring they, that up as well. well. They said all along yeah. that yeah. you know, the design is the actual hard part of this, like getting everyone on the same page. Do, you know, I mean, yeah, well, that's cool though. I mean, it'll it'll be here. So you'll have two months. Enjoy. I hope they, uh, yeah, yeah. I I mean, I'm going for trim now. Um, and it's kind of slowed down my insane final boss progress, but I've been doing my strange rocks every week, which is such a pain. Um, I don't know. I'm not finding any of the trim wrecks fun, but I, I've always wanted it. And I always (laughs) told myself if, if castle wars was ever removed, I was going to get trim. And see, doesn't it just clear things up? And see that, yeah. you know, there's more definition now of what's going to be on the comp cape. And it kind of has a idea where the comp is just doing everything in game, but trimmed is just one step more doing pretty much everything, as we see by EI, oh. EIO. Um, you know, I, I, I think that the people are forgetting that the biggest thing that is coming out of this comp cape rework. And I'm going to say this, and this has been the case since the very beginning, in my opinion, the most important thing is, is making it a cosmetic thing, removing the utility benefits, putting them on the player and allowing that cape slot to be useful again, where you can have different capes and you're not just locked into the comp cape for the best stats. That's the best part of this rework, in my opinion. Uh, I think so too. Yeah. uh, I, I think I'm I'm pretty satisfied by the compromise. I see what you did there. <laughs> or was that so unintended? I, no, I didn't mean to do that one. That was a good comp, one. Compromise. The comp uh-huh. compromise. Boy, that we should have ran that as a title when we were talking about this. <laughs> um, okay. I don't know. I, I don't think there's much else to say on the comp cape. I think it's pretty much said and done well, at this point. Um, keep I do buying feel, your livid plants. Y- yeah. Keep buying them from the merchant. Um, does anybody else feel like the profound halo is just kind of eh? Yeah, sure. it's not great. It's really not great. <laughs> but did you see uh, Mata Ryan on Twitter? No. He just like he just like went off on like how ungrateful people were being and stuff. It was pretty funny. Yeah, well, I mean, it's not your game, right? You, you ultimately, yeah. Uh, you know, you're playing the game, and whatever happens, happens with it. And when it comes down to it, at the end of the day, you choose to um, make such a huge time investment, and there is there is no way of knowing if things are going to change in the future. So, yeah, for sure. Um, that's not to say that things shouldn't just be yanked out from underneath people. I think people have had a long time to prepare on this. So, 
Uh, I don't know if I have much else to say on this. You guys ready to move on to the actual um, yeah. month ahead? Yeah, sure. Okay. So also this month um, we have the um, – oh, that's actually all we have this month, the Comp Capri work and the Weapon Diversity Beta as well as a little community event. As they say, we're setting sail for the newly <sighs> discovered island of Anachronia. I just want to say I am getting freaking tired of building boats in this damn game. Me too. Game. Me too. I'm out. I'm out on <laughs> community building events. I'm totally out on it. It's like the third boat we've built. <laughs> like, <laughs> I know. Well, I am not a boat builder. Like, it's been Lumbridge, Falador, uh-huh. uh, Port Sarum, uh, all of the different fairs, Port Sarum. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm good. <laughs> I'm good on this this content. It's so like rinse and repeat, and it's always the same with a slightly different paint job. I, gosh, yeah, I, I mean, it's it. a community event, and the last one we had was charity. Granted, we're not getting these every other week like we were back in 2016. So yeah, this it's one, not as it's not as. But you're right, Shane. That's an important point. Is yeah. that it's not. It used to be like, oh my god, just terrible. Now, now it's it's more palatable now. Yeah, and free construction. So. And farming. Yeah, there's that. And woodcutting. And farming. Yeah. It, is okay, so I have a question. Is the construction rework just these build a thons? Is that what it is? Is that <laughs> <laughs> like are they just like <laughs> instead of a construction rework, oh, you get AFK <laughs> every couple months? <laughs> Someone needs to make a video out of that. Here's your construction rework. This community just <laughs> teach. <laughs> Build boats. Oh shit! Oh, that's David's sense of humor. <laughs> that arrives on June seventeenth. The um, like sixth or seventh construction rework. Then I guess. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, it's it's you know they release they're releasing the rework in batches. <laughs> Yeah, you know, we've like we've helped clean up a city. We've rebuilt built built some boats, you know. Yeah. We we stopped the black knights from rightful re reclaiming oh, their yes, their we, land we, in Falador. We did that, uh, uh. Um also the summer special, as as anticipated, three months of membership for the price of two to go with this um Anachronia, Fossil Island as some people are calling it. Um I'll be talking about that this month. Even though it is it is fossil island <sighs> based on it, but we'll save that topic for another day. Um, Anachronia, Shane, or it the is land out of time. Anachronia, or the land out of time. Yeah, um, and Elfiers on Solomon's General Store on June twenty fourth. Elfiers? Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, am I going to become Tannis the half elf again? Yes, 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 <laughs> yes. <laughs> Woo. Yay. Pair it with your elven sniper suit. Hell yeah. You know it. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Then I'd, I, I need I need my uh, snorkel mask to sneak around in the water. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I mean, hey, I mean, we could have worse updates in June, I think. And I think uh, we're going to be hearing a lot about what's happening in July with uh, Anachronia. You know, you really just need to get over Menophos, Shane. It's not, oh, I'm over Menophos. It wasn't that bad. I'm it over Menophos. <laughs> I know. Uh, oh, that um, reminds me. I'm going to have to do start doing daily soul obelisks for this And title. city quests. Yeah, and city quests. Yeah, like 200 of them, right? OMG. It's going to take forever. Uh, just don't burn yourself out. Um, but anyways, before we... Uh, move on to other things. Uh, they did do something this week with the bank rework. Uh, they'd had a content showcase showing off what they got right now for the bank rework. Um, you know, I really don't have much to say about this at this point in time. It's looking good. It's looking like it will be arriving in game and you know as a beta at some point in the future because you know we're actually seeing it live right now, not just in mockups like we did previously. Mm-hmm. Um, I just wanted to bring this up because I have two concerns about this. Concern number one is that GIFs of Mod Shawnee's playthrough 
were all over Twitter with this this week. And that's good. That's building hype for the update, right? But Mm -hmm. we need to remember that as this is something that is tying deep into the engine, the bank rework, we want to be extra cautious that should something happen and should this get delayed by six months, the players aren't put over a barrel. So I think showing off the videos and tweeting GIFs of the bank rework as it is right now is probably not the best way to go. I would, probably you know, just I, would, just I would, be patient. I would ref- refrain from that until the beta is ready to go personally, if I was making the decisions on this, you know, we can see the, um, we can see the screenshots of what the mockups look like and that's good. And that's a good step. But I think that this is perhaps going a little bit too far. This is one of them I don't think we need We need to watch. We wanted placeholders. We're getting placeholders. Yeah. Let it be from there. Uh, another fun thing Just with this patient. is that uh, you're going to be able to see um, when you activate the cleanup where each of them uh, can potentially go, whether it's the Quest Caravan or the Diango Shop. Um, you'll also be able to sort by oh, – wow. Sort your bank by tradable, sort it by, you know, all the different inventory oh, slots. So if you want all wow. your head items, you'll be able to see that. Um, capes, you name it. Yeah, that's great. That's cool. So th- th- those are my only real t- two concerns about it is that it might be – it seems a bit too early to be showing this kind of stuff off should something unthinkable happen. I'd rather at this point just play it cautiously. Yeah, you know, we I, waited this long. That. It's fine to wait some more if yeah. we if that happened. I yeah. mean, it's being patient. But there's it's people fine. that there's it's people coming. like us who won't be able to do that, who aren't like us. Well, so that's why I think you it's know what they can be hyped. Wait. You know what? There's plenty of things they can be overhyped for. Go get hyped for. Um, I already forgot the name of the damn island, so we'll go with land out of time. Hype yourself on that one. Mm. Actually, don't do that because that's probably the worst thing you could do. Uh, find another r- way to get hyped. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I just hope that we're not – that Jagex isn't over overhyping the bank rework. Well, the the only thing about it is that I don't want people to be like, Oh, it's just placeholders. This isn't that big it's of a deal. It's like, though. well, I know, but I, I just, I would just let it be. It's, it's primarily placeholders. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's what it is. I mean, there, there's some extra search UI. features. Yeah, but I mean, and filtering. Right, but as I've said from the beginning, people wanted placeholders. That's all they give a shit about. I All the other stuff is nice. The only thing I care about is placeholders. Yeah, and you know, if you distill it down, I think you're going to find agreement in the entire community with that. So, um, yeah. uh, Should we make a guess of when this beta is going to come? Hopefully August. when it's ready. When it's ready, yeah. I don't really. Yeah, yeah that's the best really... answer right there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my bet's gonna be August. I mean, we've been oh, waiting since like. Page. I've been waiting for placeholders since OSRS put placeholders in their game, so it's been a really, really long time. OSRS has placeholders, huh? Oh yeah, they've had it for years. <laughs> well, of course they do. I mean, shit. Why wouldn't they? Yeah, a community-driven yeah. game. All right. Well, uh, let's move on to questions. But before we do that, I'll just take a moment to thank our Patreon supporters, which is something I have been waiting to do ever since I got back. It's been a while. It's been a long time since I've got to run through this list. And there's so many names on this list that I don't recognize right now. So this is going to be a fun one. Um, So before we get into what exactly Patreon is this this week, I'd like to thank uh, starting off at the 
beginning of the month, everybody, for your wonderful support of our uh, podcast on Patreon at patreon.com slash rsbnb. So starting off, I'll thank Arvid's L. Uh, I don't know if I said that name right, but pardon me if we butchered it. Brock H., Darren L., Diana, Kyle, Logan H., So Juice the Devil, Tom V., Zachary K., and Zez. Thank you all of you for your support on Patreon. It truly means the world to us, and we wouldn't be doing what we're doing with this podcast without you guys. So thank you. Pat yourselves on the back. And for those of you guys who aren't aware of what this is, just head on over to patreon.com slash rsbnb, and there you can learn all about it. And starting off for $1 a month, you'll receive a special mention in our show notes, early access to the show notes, and the ability to join our roundtable discussions, the ability to vote on topics for the monthly bit, which we're recording after this show, and you also help fund the cost for hosting and production of RSBNB Update. You can then step up to $3 a month where you'll receive a special VIP rank on Discord, a special mention on the podcast at the start of the month, and access to high-quality stereo AAC versions of the show, in addition to everything else. And for $5 a month, you'll receive a shout-out on the podcast every week and exclusive access to the outtakes that we use to build the clip show at the end of the year. Those ones are always fun to have, and uh, we got a couple of clips from this week, and we definitely got some from the last two weeks as well, so... Um, all of that and more is available to Patreon supporters who want to support at $5 a month. And as for the community rewards, well, we got three of them currently active. We got our monthly bit bonus show, which we're scheduled to record right after the show. It's called uh, We're Delving Into AFK Scape and looking at how exactly AFK Scape works in game currently. And these topics are voted on by you guys each and every month. So uh, we do have a fun time putting these together. We also have inside RSBNB updates, which includes interviews with our hosts and production team. Sirion is up this month. And you also have a chance at some point in the future to learn how the podcast comes together and maybe even get a sneak peek of where we record the show. I did that one a couple months back. So we'll, uh, we got lots we can work on for that one. And the newest thing that we'll be doing next Saturday, next Saturday at, I believe, I think we're going to aim for probably 3 or 4 p.m. Eastern, but time will be subject to change. So watch the Patreon page for this, the RSBNB Update Roundtable, um, just a general discussion hosted on Discord with the hosts and anybody who wants to join, pretty much about anything and everything RuneScape related. And we'll stream these and we'll publish them and uh, everybody will have a chance to listen right from discord so and of course if you're a patreon supporter you are encouraged to join this round table and finally and finally at 99 dollars a month should we get there movie night in the rsbnb discord including movies uh, star trek and probably star wars if you listen to the last couple weeks you guys had a you guys had a you guys had a discussion on that we did a little bit a little bit so but the phantom shane has returned Indeed. So we'll, I get to exert a little bit more control over that now. So, But all this and more can be found at patreon.com slash rsbnb. And once again, thank you to everybody for your support. It means the world to us. All righty. So on to questions we go. First one from Sunset Fish. Um, if you are a regular citizen of Gilador, not a hero, what city or area would you like to live in? Um, he says, I've always loved the serenity vibe of Lydia or the calm oceans of Ashdale, or maybe even just become a fisher in Catherby. What about y'all? Uh, Tannis, you go first. Man, this is so hard. Ah, it's so hard because I kind of want to hang out in the islands, you know, because that would be, you know, it's the islands, but, but Prif, I mean, a crystal city. I gotta live with my brethren in Prif. I got to. Got All to. right. All right. How about you, David? Yeah, I think I think Manifoss. Uh, I think it's what? really pretty, and there's lots of stuff to do. Wow, that's not right something on. I would have anticipated. No. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Is that because you're going to be doing all those city, uh, city quests there? Uh, yeah, exactly. You know, I gotta like, gotta really. I might as well live here. It's gonna yeah, be, it will be the living next couple there for weeks a of my life are gonna be, right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I I think that aesthetically, Manifest looks really cool. All right. Yeah, you're right about that too. Yeah. 
um for me it would be the um the wooded areas that right outside Laledia and probably not inside Laledia but just the wooded areas outside and like a log cabin or something that'd be pretty good really i'm surprised that you weren't gonna park it just north of ardone no you wouldn't no no all right no mountains and woods that's me so you just like to play a farmer you wouldn't want to be a farmer not in game no (laughs) right on fair enough all right, thank you, Sunset Fish. Uh, Sirion writes in from last week. Welcome back to the podcast, Shane. I'm currently enjoying some well earned rest, but wanted to quickly pitch in here to remind people the time and effort the people on the producers team put in to keep this show running. And with that out of the way, I wanted to ask, what is the one thing that you get that gets you behind the microphone every week to record the show? And what is the proudest thing you've ever achieved on the podcast? And finally, if you could choose anyone, absolutely anyone alive, who would you want to guest on the show? I, guess, I think it's fair that I start this one first, right? Oh, yeah. Um, for me, what keeps me coming back every week is that, you know, um, probably up until about 2016, it was normally just me and the co-host running things, which was fine. But it got a little bit difficult over time. And, you know, the the issue with that is that um, we didn't have a breadth of opinions, nor did we have depth of opinions at the time. And as a result of that, it was really hard to find a guest sometime. And we were we were just constantly repeating the own the the guests and now you'll note that depending on the week we have someone who is tailored to that specific uh piece of content that's come out in this case it's david in quest weeks diana you know got the whole we got a whole list of people we could choose from on this and you know i i think for me um it is just it's a it's a relaxation thing i think the actual recording part of it because we handle most of the production in the week before, as you guys learn. And listeners probably don't know this. And we could probably talk about this on Inside RSB, the update. But there are many times that production for the next show starts before the next show is even out. So um, we've pretty much got everything split up across the entire week. And I think it's just the um, it's the ability to come in here, sit, talk... And when we do that, uh, we ultimately wind up with being able to put something together that brings a good amount of good to everybody in the community. And I think that's the best part of it. So that's what probably keeps me coming back, combined with just the fact that it is a release of everything over the past week. Um, Proudest thing we've ever achieved on the podcast in the past? Oh, that's a hard question. Tannis, can I get some help on this one? Uh, well, I mean, I've only been here for a fraction of your time, Shane. Um, but actually being able to talk with and kind of interview a Mod Porky, I think, is definitely up there. That's, okay. That's a highlight in my yeah, book. Yeah, that is a highlight. That was definitely a highlight. That was a great episode this past February. Um, I think one of the things that I am very proud of and this is something that uh, a lot of other people can't uh can't uh, say and lots of other uh media related to runescape can't say whether they be podcasts or youtubers can't say is that you know i i don't think there's ever been an episode where we've gone in and we've you know effectively lost it so to speak right we've always been able to tone things down and reach a uh decisive middle ground i think As in, the way I want to put this is that we are not MSNBC and we are not Fox News. Right. Um, Yeah. We're we're smack dab in the middle and I think we um, dissect everything and are able to provide that missing bit of information that you don't get when you go to the uh, subreddit or you look at social media. And I think if I was to just pick one thing in general that we do really well, um, that would be it. Aside from, you know, the individual highlights of Mod Porky or the double XP weekend episodes or the RuneFest episodes, you know? Yeah. Um, so the, it, that would probably be the podcast claim to fame. Um, anybody alive who we would want to have on the show ever? 
Um, you know, one thing I'd like to do at some point in the future, and this one's a really, really hard one to do. Um, I would like to get together at some point in the future. And I wasn't able to do this because I was away this year, but maybe next year for our big anniversary next year, um, we will be able to go in and get all of the anchor co-hosts together and do three per and effectively in the run up to one of our anniversaries, um, just have a sit down with all the different co-hosts of the past and uh, bring them on the show. And, you know, there's just too many of them to have them on one show, I think. But that's something I'd like to do is like to have a bit of a retrospective on our uh, previous co-hosts. Um, and if we could choose absolutely anyone alive who we would want to have on the show. Hmm. 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 You know, I think based on my interactions with him at RuneFest and just the pure reason for its existence, I would say at some point, and I don't even know if he's interested in RuneScape anymore, but I think it would be pretty neat to have Andrew Gower on the show one day. Uh, yeah, that that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, that'd be pretty pretty good. Um, you know, I, I, this is hard to describe for anybody who hasn't been there. But you know, you go to RuneFest and you go up to the three of them. You just talk to them. They're normal people, and you know, as has been kind of illustrated in the past, they're not out for the fame or stardom that people assign to them. They are. They were legitimately interested in hearing about the website, the show, and how it brought together a community and they knew that that has happened and they are very cognizant of the fact that they have brought people like that together. So, um, hopefully that answers those questions very well. I don't know if you, any of you guys want to chime in on that because, uh, this one does seem geared towards me, but, uh, if you guys want to go for well, it, I've been coming back for a couple of years now. Right. I mean, yeah, a little something, a little something. Um, I think the the reason that I, I am I haven't burned out or um, haven't well, basically I haven't burned out, um, is because I look at it. I look at what we do is really important. The the way to get to that middle ground most of the time, the way to get to that perspective is because we have um, different perspectives. And whereas you know some weeks that's you know we're really looking at it from a critical development standpoint um i kind of come in and try to be the advocate of the average player that doesn't know anything about that and um i'm just looking at it as, as just an average person i'm not super great at any one part of the game but i'm i'm decent with everything you know um and I think that helps to get us to where we're where we're going a lot of times. Um, it helps to balance things out. I know I learn every week. I will learn or be calmed down either from Shane. And then there are some weeks that I like to think I can get him outside of his head and think about just a, a more, um, you know, just playing the game kind of approach rather than like dissecting every little detail. Um, so I think that's a good mix. I think it, or from the PR uh, persuasion as we've been doing for uh, right. a while. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I just think that's a. It's been a good, a good mix, and it's something that um, I appreciate and you know take seriously. And we already talked about the proudest thing you've achieved on the show. And if you could have anyone to guest on the show, who would that be? See, this is so hard because it's like, is it anyone like? in the RuneScape field. Um, I don't know. Hmm. Uh, okay. My serious answer would be, um, oh gosh, I'm going to have to look up this name, but Dr. Mick from Special Effects. Ooh, ooh, that'd be great. Right around that, that Double would be awesome. XP weekend. And, uh, yeah, not. that would that would be amazing to me um, to be able to to meet him and and be able to talk um, about his work and stuff. That that would be that would be great. And on a lighter side, to torture Shane, Bernie Sanders. 
because I'm a Bernie bro all the way, and that would just be awesome. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> all right, how about you, David? Uh, what would what 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 is entices you to come on the show, and what do you feel is your greatest achievement with the show? And who would you like uh, to have on? I think a lot of people. Oh, push to talk. Yeah, so I think a lot of people feel that all elite PVMers have the... And, uh, and yeah, so while it's true that, that all of us are pretty elitist, I think that we also can be reasonable and um, understand that there's more parts of the game than just, just what we do. And I also like just sharing knowledge because I think that with that perhaps my excitement about certain things might help others be excited about it too. That's good. And we appreciate it because, you know, um, the PVM perspective isn't something that, uh, is, is well known out there. And, you know, you, you do, when you look at the surface of sometimes of what you say, it does appear with that elitist argument, but once you delve down into your reasoning and whatnot, it actually makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Um, What's the proudest thing you've ever achieved with the show? Or even in former articles, I guess. I still think that the the monthly special that we did oh, on about EOC? EOC six Ooh. years later was Ooh, like I think yeah. I thought we just like crushed it. Yeah. Um, that was, that was, was I thought that was really That is really one good. of the ones we released publicly. Yeah. So that one is great. Um, I definitely felt like my my specific knowledge base was uniquely helpful on that one in a way that was great and just a lot of good topics and stuff. And finally, uh, who would you have on the show if you could have anyone on the show? Um, probably Mod Ramen um, okay. or Mod Pie. Well, either one of the two like main combat uh, combat people, I think. All righty. Yeah. Um, or maybe, I mean, maybe like Chris L. Actually, like oh, yeah. he created, yeah, he, he, he created he, my he, favorite piece of content in any game I've ever played. And he was also heavily so. involved in EOC. And he's working on the right. new MMO right yeah. now. Oh, really? Yeah, I he got moved what? off of he got moved off of RS3 to the new MMO. I thought he left Jack. Yeah, I thought he left. Jack oh, who as am well. I thinking of? Someone else got moved off of RS3 who was on combat. maybe mod mod Ollie. You might be thinking of. Yeah, there you are. There you are. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but Chris L, you know, uh, Yakamaru, Araxor, Virago, pretty good, pretty great legacy of uh, content. Content that people are still doing every single day, uh, years and years later, um, which is, I think, very impressive. All righty. Um, next one comes from Logan. Hey, hey, my name is Logan. I'm a pretty new Patreon sub, and of course here we thank you for your support. Um I'm most curious as to what your favorite skilling methods are right now, or if you have a favorite AFK moneymaker. I almost play exclusively on Android mobile now, so I primarily AFK when I play. Boy, Tannis, do we have an answer for him or not? Uh, stay tuned. <laughs> it's yeah. coming. Yeah, it's it, coming. it is coming in a full hour-long special about AFK scape. Um, but as a bit of a tease for that right now, I do have to say... Um, you know, I, I still think that you can't beat divination for AFK money making, probably, right? It's it, hard to call it AFK though. Like it's just quasi AFK. Well, it's a click every I mean, so often, of. right? That's, yeah. It's pretty AFK. Because the yeah. thing I was gonna think of is way less AFK than divination. Like uh, I, I still think like I think it's wild that pyre fiends are ten mil an hour. It's like hilarious to me. Um, and those are. Like, and of course, the reason for that is the uh, incense sticks. The ashes, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, the ashes, yeah. Yeah, you just bring magic note paper and you just note them up. Yeah, uh, well, if you have the, uh, I forgot about the divination cape, that does help it um, become much more AFK. That helps. Yeah. Um,. There's that, and you know, just uh, diving into this, um, we're we are definitely heading to a point, I think, where most every skill in the game is going to have an AFK training method associated with it. Um, and see, I, I think it's hard to quantify this because when you AFK, you're going to be giving up some kind of XP per hour, right? 
Mm-hmm. Um, I think the best example we have right now of AFK scape in game of AFK skilling is either going to be rune span for rune crafting or mining the new mining uh, rune yeah. arc. Um, but you know you also can't beat things like bonfires as well. Those are those are pretty fun. Um, so yeah, well, I mean, if you're just talking just pure AFK, then I mean. There's lots of stuff. Yeah, waterfall fishing, but, yeah. but I, that's not one of my favorites. Um, you know, if I had to choose a favorite that's just currently going with the way my with the way my current training is, wood cutting. Uh, wood wood cutting has always been the best. Yeah, wood, cut, wood cutting right? with crystal like, yeah, trees. Always, yeah. Granted, it's less XP, but I mean, hey, it's you just go there and you click every so often, and away you go. Well, you know, I IFP say- has showed me that uh, God Wars Dungeon 1 is incredibly AFK. If you have, like, tier 85 plus gear, or even tier 80 plus gear, it's very AFK. Like, one click every five minutes probably does it. <laughs> Look at this guy. This guy. <laughs> God Wars Dungeon 1. Yeah, that's AFK. All right. You know how that long is. that would last? Yeah. Well, you just gotta right. you just gotta have the right setup. I, I could help you with a setup. I promise you'll last a very long time. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh man it's cool yeah. um, but AFK money making though that one's harder isn't it that one's a lot harder um, I mean divination with the divination outfit sure nothing's um, gonna probably beat divination when it comes to money um, I mean that's one of the things that hit in our um, money making Sir, skilling money making, money making special um, yeah yeah so the, I don't think I don't think you're going to beat that um, for money. Uh, yeah, you're just you're not you're not going to beat that for money. I don't. I mean, you can have the, you can have the fire and forget things, kind of like your plank maker. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess I guess you could, I guess you could do that. Uh, or apparently, you could. Apparently, you can breed perfect animals and get all kinds of money. <laughs> I didn't know that. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, um, but those, I mean, those are kind of set it and forget it. I yeah, yeah. I don't know if that counts as same. AFK. Um, yeah. There's lots of things that you can AFK put in your player owned dungeon and make money from that. Um, it ain't big money, it might, it, but it will. I remember when we rival. did the money making special, the fruit bat was still like a couple mil an hour. <laughs> That would still blows my mind. Yeah, from the papayas. Yeah, um, gathering, it still is gathering. It's not gather, AFK though. Gathering. Well, I mean, it's it's a click, right? Nah, I don't consider that AFK though okay. either. See, yeah. I, I consider anything that's not high intensive AFK personally. See, I almost kind of look at AFK. God, don't I? I consider uh, it to be. Anything like that you click, like a clicker, because really, when you think about it, you're either if, if if you're playing like think you're like you're playing a mobile clicker, right? You're watching a bar fill up. That's you know like a like RuneScape, yeah. uh, Idle Adventures, right? Yeah. Well, that's exactly what we're doing. Only we're watching them animation. I mean, hmm. seriously. Yeah. When okay. you think about it, it's the same thing, and I probably made some people mad but it really is if if you if you think outside of it like what you're doing you're just clicking that's afk to me all right that's fair um i don't know if i have anything else on that so i think we can leave that question uh right there on there but um i i I always come back to come back to my crystal trees which are good um and you know, I, I think that's probably the best AFK wood cutting there is right now, right? Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah. So, and money making divination. So I think that is uh, uh, art. Arc is pretty good too. Golden, yeah, arc, if you do golden bamboo. Yeah, but you need to. I mean, yeah, that's a you, click. Have to, you have to find an island for it. But. Yeah, I, I mean, I already have that. I'm just trying to think how how often you'd need to click for that, right? That'd be like every every few minutes, I think. Hey. Yeah, yeah, it's not as AFK as yeah. Crystal. Not as AFK as Crystal, but it's still good. Okay. All right. Yeah, I really wish I had uh, RS Mobile for this trip I was on. That would have been great. 
<laughs> but hey, that's that's what happens. ILS, huh, buddy? Yeah, ILS. Yeah, and we're actually going to talk about nobody that. loves us. We're going to talk nobody about that right now. So. Thank you, Logan, for your questions, and thank you, everybody else, for your questions. If you want to send your own questions in, you can email questions at rsbnb.com, or you can leave them on Twitter at rsbnb, or even you could leave us on the forums at update.rsbnb.com slash ask. All righty. So moving on into tech news, um, Apple's Worldwide Developers Conference kicked off this week, which is, of course, the uh, conference for Apple developers that details all of the new changes that are on the way for Apple's software and ecosystems, iCloud, and you name it, pretty much everything. Um, we're not going to go too deep into this, but uh, there's a lot of changes coming for uh, developers to write their code more efficiently, and I'm not going to bore you guys with that. There's stuff in there that would certainly interest me and would probably interest a few of you out there, but that's not what the purpose of the show is, unfortunately. So starting off, we have iOS 13, which features dark mode, which is something people have wanted for a long time, the ability to just have a darker skin for iOS. Um, this is the pretty much the headlining feature of iOS 13, dark mode. I like dark mode. You dark do? mode is a good mode. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it, it helps a lot having that contrast. Oh, okay. I see. All right. So I wonder if you'll still need to use the high contrast mode then. Oh, probably not with dark mode. I, I usually have to turn high contrast off if whatever I'm using has a dark okay. theme that I can I can do. All right. Um, they're also bringing in a quick path swipe keyboard, which is the standard, you know, drag and type keyboard that they have on Android and whatnot. Um, I've, I've never really uh, taken to these, but I've, uh, you know, had Android people say, how can you type by just pecking out individual letters, right? But, hey, I mean, here we are. So Yeah. You can, of course, get functionality like that if you install a third-party keyboard like Gboard or SwiftKey. Or I think it's SwiftKey. I don't even know what it is called anymore. Um, yeah. I know a lot of people will, who are former Android users who have that now. Okay. Um, and lots of great accessibility changes, um, in particular voice control. You'll be able to effectively talk to your phone and say press the home button to go to the home screen, um, pinch or swipe left, swipe right. So you'll, anything you would do with an action, you'd be able to effectively talk to your phone and tell it to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Because right, now was... you, because right now you're limited to Siri and dictation yeah. it was you sent that to me i'm like oh I'm just like, i can't believe it i'm like because i was seriously i was seriously thinking well the next time i get a phone i'm actually going to check both both sides because um the androids have gotten much much better so i'm like you know i'm going to be open to it now <laughs> nope <laughs> we're gonna stick right where we're at because that is so cool um, it's so cool. If you used a Mac, they have something else called Hover Text. So what this will be is you'd be be able to um, have a Hover Text for every button, and it would be able to read it out to you. What is on your screen? That's amazing. And I think they might have it for iOS too. I'm not 100 percent sure. So okay. Um, iOS 13 is also getting support for Bluetooth mice, so you'll be able to plug in a mouse and use a mouse on iOS with a cursor and everything. Like a real mouse? A real mouse, yeah. Not like the one button? No, a real crap. mouse. You could, okay. you know, even if you have like a, like if you have a USB-C based iPad, all you have to do is plug it in. Or if you have a lightning based iOS device, you can get a, one of the USB adapters and plug a mouse in and away you go. Oh, Ooh. I, I got to get I got to get hooked up with that before we get mobile. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine doing that on an iPad. That's what that's exactly what I was imagining doing it on. <laughs> and yeah. there will be the ability to have USB and network file access in the file app. So you'll be able to plug in a thumb drive now to iOS as well and access files off it. Oh, that's wow. These are some really good really good improvements indeed and it's going to be available on the iphone 6s and newer including the iphone se okay. so 
Um, they're also splitting off the iPad uh, operating system into iPad OS. Is going to offer a more desktop-like experience on the iPad, different from iOS. And this is effectively to get people used to the idea of using an iPad as their primary computer, bridging the gap between the Mac laptops and the iPads. Um, People say they're going to be able to use an iPad as their primary computer. I still don't think so. I think it's wishful thinking at best. I don't see that. I I mean, when I think of something that does that i still think surface and that yeah. would definitely be what i would buy yeah i mean i just like to give you an example i toyed with the idea of trying to edit a podcast on ios but i looked very quickly into the editing audio editing apps that are available nothing compares to adobe audition and until adobe audition was would be on ios it's just a non-starter so and granted, there is USB support now, so you could plug in the USB mixer and whatnot. But I think it's I think it's wishful thinking that they're going to be bridging the gap. Uh, for gamers, Xbox and PS4 controllers will now work natively on iOS, iPadOS, and TVOS. So if you download a game on TVOS, you'll just be able to use your Xbox or PS4 controller. And but what uh, could you possibly play? On an iPad, uh, that would require a controller. They have a real asphalt racing game. Fortnite. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, uh, uh, okay. I'll give you those two. Yeah, those All are right. the two that initially came to mind. That's probably as much as the old, old Apple can do, ain't it? Yeah, and then okay. the, like, what they're effectively doing is trying to get people gaming on their platforms. So, um, And I mean, mobile gaming is one thing, but gaming on the TV is another entirely. Um, then we have the on the Mac OS side, this next one is going to be called Catalina. Um, the biggest news out of this one is that iTunes is disappearing. They're splitting it into three apps, music, podcasts, and TV. Um, so iTunes is gone. It's been around since 2001. Wow. Yeah. And, you know, it's a, it's a bloated piece of crap even on, on Mac. So it's long overdue for this to happen. Yeah, that's true. It is. It is bloated. But you get yeah. to keep it on Windows. Okay. Uh, they're also debuting Project Catalyst, which will allow developers to take an iPad app and also build it to run on the Mac. So their idea with this is that if somebody builds an iPad app, they'll be able to check an additional box and it will just work on the Mac as well. And this is their oh. bridging the gap of between uh, Mac OS and iOS. And, you know, I'm going to go out on the limb and I'm going to say there's going to be at some point down the line where you're going to have one Mac OS and one iOS, and they're effectively going to become one operating system because what we're seeing more and more as time goes on is we're seeing a parallel trend where the changes that happen for iOS also are brought to Mac OS, and these things are just getting closer and closer and closer. So I think that's going to happen at some point. Not in the next couple of years, though, but maybe five years down the line. We'll see. Um, and then there was the Mac Pro. The pro computer that starts at fifty nine hundred dollars with a one thousand dollar monitor stand. We didn't. We don't need to even know about it. No, we don't need to know about it because the way this is built is that if you're, if you even have to ask if the Mac Pro is for you, it's not. This is designed for people who are rendering, you know, three D Pixar movies or scenes from three D Pixar movies, so they can. Um, render their movie and get a quick turnaround and be able to effectively work live on these movies. And the screen that was debuted, you know, it's it's about half the cost of similar screens that do that right now. So while we're seeing sticker shock on this and the $1,000 stand, every pro who has used one of these screens is saying they can't believe that it's this cheap from Apple. So um, that's the difference in perspective. And, you know, this is perhaps the biggest thing that drew the most attention, and that's unfortunate for this because the media is just hyping up something that they have no reason to hype up um, because everybody who is reading their papers aren't going to be purchasing the Mac Pro and people, the majority of people who are going to be purchasing the screen don't need the stand because they already have their own arms that they like to use, their own mounts for their monitors. So, Right. I kind of look at this as like – I mean, think about it like if it was, um, if you're a mechanic, you might want to see a flyer 
for a Craftsman Tools, but you don't really need to know what the latest and greatest car hoist thing is because you probably can't afford that in your garage. Yeah, exactly. Like that's for a big shop, you know? That's precisely it. Um, but that's pretty much WWDC. Do you guys have any questions or any thoughts on this? I just like the cheese grater memes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, you know, that's what the pro community wanted because that's what the old Mac Pro used to be like. So uh, they're very happy with that. Um, I'm actually looking forward to iOS 13, but I will say that, you know, it's just like, is this is this really the best that we're getting from Apple on the consumer front that it's dark mode and a different keyboard and mouse support you know i didn't think about it because i got i got lost in the new accessibility features right. but well, yeah that's that's something true. for you to get excited about but for the yeah. rest of us there's really not much there because yeah, you could do quick path with gboard dark mode i mean you can take it or leave it Mouse support is nice, but beyond that, there's really not that much in iOS 13. And aside from the splitting up of iTunes in the new Mac OS, there's really not much for end users as well. So More might appear as time goes on, but I don't know. I, I, think, uh, I think the software gulf between Android and iOS is definitely decreasing, and I think you saying that you'd consider uh, looking at Android next time you need a new phone says a lot on this, especially from the accessibility front. But given what your reaction was to iOS 13 and the new accessibility stuff, I think that's probably a good thing for you, right? Oh, it's yeah, it's a great thing. And it, and it in no way am I like saying that Apple isn't as good. It's just that Android has improved so much that it's actually maybe a viable choice. I, I know a lot of other visually impaired people um, – do use it so but before you it was you know forget it like you you were with apple that was what you needed to use you yeah. know um and i'm still going to because i'd even the say features coming are great i mean great. even if you could i'd say probably even look into a mac because you get all the ios accessibility stuff on a mac for free you know and and i actually thought about that back in two I think it was 2008 um i was really considering a mac um but I was, I'm really, I've been really reluctant to learn a whole new way of doing things. Um, so I, I never made that jump. Yeah. And plus you play lots of games as well. Yeah. 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 Uh, speaking of games, uh, we got some information on Project Stadia this week in particular that it will be launching this fall in a Founders Edition for $169, um, which includes a Stadia Pro Controller and a Chromecast Ultimate that you'll be able to use for the service. It also includes three months of the service for free. After that, it will be nine ninety nine a month. And based on your bandwidth, you'll be able to play at... Uh, up to 60 frames per second at 4K resolution with 5.1 surround sound. You know, there, which is awesome, but beware your data cap because Ooh, yeah. I have heard rumors that 65 hours of 4K, 60 FPS, you're looking at a terabyte. Um, well, it's 35 megabits per second that they say yeah. is recommended for that. So. So 35 megabits per second times 3,600 seconds, that's 126,000 megabits in one hour. So 10 hours, you're easily at a, at a, a terabit. So oh, a terabit, well, and if yeah, we convert that into uh, uh, about 100 hours, it'll take you to reach, reach a terabyte. Uh, okay. About 100 hour. hours okay. of gaming at that, yeah. It's a lot, man. Yeah. It is a lot because they are not very generous. I, I but, mean, I mean, that's at 4K 60 FPS. You will yeah. be able to take that down to 1080p for half that. Right, and this is probably not as big of a th it, It's a big thing here in the U.S. because they they just jab us with these caps as much as they possibly yeah, can. Yeah, I have unlimited data on my it, connection. Yeah, see, and yeah. 300 I, I wish, megabits I, down. Yeah. 15 megabits up, unlimited data. 
Uh, <sighs> why won't your country take me, Shane? <laughs> and that's not even the best I could get. I could get six hundred. I could get six hundred down, twenty up. Wow! Wow! And that's not even over fiber. That's over standard cable. Yeah, that's that's cool. That's cool. There's, there's no reason ours should be this way. All right. Um, but, I mean, hey, it's all over Chromecast. And, um, games include Doom Eternal, Wolfenstein, Youngblood, Destiny 2, Grid, Final Fantasy 15, Elder Scrolls Online, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Borderlands 3, NBA 2K, Farming Simulator 19, just to name a few. There's some decent new games coming out on it. Um, I don't know what else they're going to put, like what the older you know stuff is going to be. I'm still on the fence about Stadia. Like, I want it to be really, really good. Um, I I want it to make games st- streaming like a reality and real. Um, but right now, I'm having a hard time figuring out who. You know. We'll use it, and personally, I can't think of a case for me. You know, I'd rather just buy an Xbox One X for 4K gaming. Yeah, and PS5 is right around the corner too. But with those, I mean, you do have a much greater hardware cost. Um, the only problem that I'm, the only th- this is the, this is the thing that gets me though. You either have to have a subscription, um. And that's going to run you, what he says, like nine, ten bucks a month. Uh, that's another 120 bucks a year. Yeah. Or you're going to have to buy the games individually. And or you can purchase the <laughs> Xbox One X, pay $15 a month, get Xbox Live and Xbox Game Pass all in one. Well, yeah, there's that. <laughs> so I don't know. I can't, I'm, I'm trying to figure out a case to have it because I think it's cool and I want. I want it to pioneer this technology um, to see where it can go, but uh, I can't figure out a reason that I I would need it, and that kind of sucks. Or you could just go for free and buy games on this and stream them, which, I mean, that's another option if you don't want to buy the Founders Edition or pay the subscription fee. Yeah, that's what I mean. You'd have to buy yeah. buy the games individually, and that's going to... I don't know. Gonna it's hard to say. I, there's a case for it, I guess, but I just... I'm having trouble making that because... Like, if I didn't have the computer I had, oh, I yeah. would probably, that's you know... That's the case for it, I think, if you don't yeah, have Yeah, maybe console. that is. Maybe that is. Yeah. 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 Okay. That makes sense. Um... We are we are running uh, up of the two hour mark, so I'll just take us into our next tech news uh, right now, um, and that is that the Justice Department has, expo- has started exploring an antitrust case against Google of all companies. First, first of all, <sighs> you'd think they'd choose Facebook first or something, right? I uh, you you would. Think, but you know what? All the the idiots that we have in our government, they're oh, that's how I talk to my grandkids. I don't want to do anything against Facebook. I the mean, idea it's... behind this is why they're looking at Google is because Google has upwards of ninety percent of the search market share, and they also feel that most of Google's advertisement revenues come from ads tied to its search results. I mean that that. Was that David? You cut out. That checks out to me. It makes sense. I mean, yes, it makes sense. But what people aren't understanding is that Bing can't just go, "Hey, we're going to be a big competitor to Google, and we're going to, you know, start indexing things better." These things take time to build up. You can't just, you know. Well, there's just so many. There are so many things that need to be addressed with antitrust google is not the first one that they should have went after um because i just don't i don't think i don't think and you're not even locked into engine, google that's what i'm saying i don't think a search engine is as detrimental as some of the other some of the you're other things i mean facebook apple's a bigger, you are locked apple's in. a bigger case because you're in you're stuck yes. in that apple ecosystem 
you know? Yep. Yep. I think it's at least a start, though. I mean, it's a start. I mean, I'm all for antitrust. Don't get me wrong, but I just think it was a weird place to uh, to to hit first. Uh, I don't know. I, I really, we really need to, we really need to hit Facebook and 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 stop. Oh, uh, the FTC that. is looking into Facebook. Yeah, well, that's the FTC. So yeah. we'll that's. We'll see. Um, you know, I think the biggest thing that people are missing with this is that um, you can, of course, use a different search engine out there like Bing or you know, I don't even know what the alternative to Bing is. But um, you're not going to get – Is Ask Jeeves still a thing? <laughs> That's a good question. That's become Ask.com. Ask <laughs> that was Ask.com. There you go. Yeah. Start using that. I mean, see, that's the thing. You can go to any of these different search engines and you can put in your search result, right? Or your search request. But you're not going to get the same level of quality that you get out of Google. So, right. Yeah, um, Google's really, really good. It's and, so powerful. And these other companies could, if they wanted to compete with them, like Microsoft could build a world-class search engine and expand their knowledge graph, the knowledge graph being all of the data that's available and the way it's presented. They could do that. But Microsoft's core business isn't search. Microsoft's core business is enterprise consumers, whereas Google's core business is making information available. And that's why Google is so good. There is no, There is no one out there who wants to compete against Google because Google does it so well and the companies know that – actually, I don't know if I should say this because it feels as though most of the time that they're, that what you get on Google is good. Though I don't know if there's ever been a case where something has been censored off of Google in the Western world. Well, we wouldn't know, right? That's yeah. the whole thing. And, yeah, you would. And like it, I, what I'm saying is it would be nice to have competitors like Bing and whatnot. I think Bing is the best one to look at for search, but you're not going to get as good results. It would also be nice to have transparent search so you could see exactly how the results came up. But that's all part of the secret sauce, so that's why we don't see that. But at the end of the day, I think Google is not the right target to be looking at for this because yeah. – it's not like Microsoft when they were bundling Internet Explorer and they, you know, you were effectively locked into it and you couldn't delete it. Um, it's not like Facebook or Apple where you're stuck in these ecosystems and if you want to leave them, you basically have to uh, start communicating with people differently. Um, Facebook's a big, big uh, concern for that. Apple less so, but it's still a, a thing as why people don't leave the Apple ecosystem. Whereas with Google. You know, even in Google Chrome, if you go into the settings, you go into the Chrome settings, um, you can change your search quite easily on that. So, um, you know, it's it's not as though it's something that uh, is locked in. You know, you go into even Google Chrome, you got Google, Bing, and Yahoo available as options. So, anyways, um, I think that's uh, that's enough for tech news this week. We're going to move on. Uh, to our other things, and thank you everybody for sticking with us for this long episode of RSBMB Update. You know, I just had to have one of these episodes on my return, right? Of course. So, um, I'll t- take a moment and point everybody to uh, the Informer Roundup for the month of May. That is out where we talked about, um, of course, uh, your first article about EA and Star Wars on May the 4th. Ha ha ha. Uh, David's uh-huh. article with more. Um, full manual combat tips and myself talking about uh, the comp cape and how sometimes it's just not worth the business case to be brave. And you also wrote two articles for us this month. Tannis took a look at uh, the mining and smithing rework six months on. So that's a fun one to read. And then we also, of course, had deep analysis on desperate times, both from Alex and Sirion. Alex looked at the story side of it, and Sirion, of course, looked at the uh, design side, and in particular, looking at player agency and whether or not your character would have made the decisions they made during the quest if they had a choice. We also did have the uh, wrapping up of our two uh, relaunch skill of the months, uh, including fire making 
and Slayer. Jamandy52 won the Fire Making Skill of the Month with just over 14 million XP gained. And Tannis, you won the Slayer competition with only 3.7 mil gained. That was a lower number than I was expecting. It was, but that makes me the winningest Skill of the Month co-host of all time. There you go. (laughs) And I can also (laughs) report... That for the month of June, we'll be doing two competitions again. We'll be running a divination contest that kicks off on the 14th. So you can sign up for that at rsbnb.com slash skotm. And following that on the 21st, we'll also be running a runecrafting contest, which is the first runecrafting contest we've run since 2010. Whoa. Yeah. It's been nine years since we had a runecrafting contest. Yeah, that that ought to be interesting, especially with the soul thing now. Yeah, soul and there was no uh, rune span back then either for that one. So, oh wow! Oh, no wonder it's been nine years. Yeah, and, did it without rune span. And I'll just also toot my own horn on this one. If you head on over to any of the Informer update websites, and hopefully the RSBNB one soon, they now work wonderfully on your mobile devices. Woo! So. Have a look at those. Informer.rsbnb.com. All right. So what do we got for achievements of the week? I believe you said you'd start us off with the first four, David. Yeah. Uh, we've got Nidhogg1 with 99 fire making on June 6th. Uh, Dro, uh, 99 summoning on June 5th. Uh, Nidhogg1 with 99 cooking on June 4th. And uh, Wit- Witty... Uh, 120 agility. Whitey? Okay, sure. Uh, 120 agility on June 3rd. <laughs> Nicely done. Uh, next up, we have Wiki86 with 99 smithing on the 3rd. Murovic with 99 woodcutting on the 2nd. Takis Fugo with 99 cooking on June 1st. And Wolfotopia with 99 runecrafting also on the 1st. Very nice. Then we have... Wiki 86 again with 99 mining on the first. We have Takis Fuego with 99 farming. Ooh, there you go, Shane, on June 1st. And Lord Zarich with 99 farming. Oh, no, the farming on May nice. 31st. Very there nice. You know. Very nice. All right. Good achievements, everybody. Um, I believe also David has another pick of the week in the form of a song. So I'll let you uh, talk about that and share that for us here. Yeah, so one of my favorite artists, Lana Del Rey, seems to release a summer-themed song almost every summer. And uh, this summer, uh, the track's called Doing Time. And uh, yeah, it's just like a, it's like a fun summer jam, I guess. I've been listening to it a lot and, and quite enjoying it. I would I would play some of it, but I don't want to get anything muted on the show, so I'll just put a link to that in the uh, in uh, in in the show notes, and that will take your word for it. <clears throat> yeah, but, yeah, it's very like calming and okay, and fun. But there's some stuff, you know, there's some good storytelling. I think a lot of her stuff has pretty good storytelling, and I like her voice. So. All righty, well, you can find the link to that in the show notes at update.rsbnb.com. Once again, updated for your browsing pleasure on your mobile devices so um what have we been up to i think i should start this one since i've been away well yeah um i took a bit of a trip uh, a bit of a run around some of the uh u.s states it was uh good fun lots of uh history uh related things that i uh saw especially uh Related to the Civil War and whatnot, so that was good fun. Spent, uh, I think it's around nine, ten days there. Um, but uh, it is good to be back here doing RSB and the update as expected, and uh, of course uh, delving into the RS updates again and uh, bringing everything forward for you guys. So um, I, I enjoyed my time, but it, but it's good to be back. And RS wise, still wood cutting, and I think I got the crazy idea. That I am going to cut magics for 120 woodcutting and then use those magics for fire making. Are you doing elders too? I mean, I could do elders. Yeah. Oh, God, the pain. But hmm. I think elders are just slower. 
so. Uh, elders are super slow. Yeah. Yeah, it's slow, but. I mean, uh, if I'm going to do uh, elders, I might as well sell the logs, right? Well, but if I'm true. doing magics, yeah. I might as well burn them. That was that was that was my analysis in my head with that. Yes, I would like yeah, to get one twenty fire I mean, making at sense. some point, right? And I mean, hey, it's better than just buying logs outright. I think. So. Yeah, you know what? I don't like to just burn money. Exactly. So, that's why I, I mean. I, I think that's a better way to go, and you know, granted, it'll probably take longer, but it's better than you know doing elders and then having to convert that and buy buy logs at the end of the day. So, I think that's a crazy way to go, but it kills two birds with one stone. Um, but yeah, that's about it. RS wise, um, how about you, uh, Tannis? I've been doing a lot of smithing on Junior, um, trying to get him up in the 90s. So I'm at 88 right now, uh, trying to get up in the 90s so I'll be able to craft the Elder Rune plate bodies and get a stash of those uh, ready for a future double XP weekend. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right. And how about you, David? What you been up to on RS? Uh either trimmed requirements um i spend time doing the statue weekly um and some unlike the soul obelisk daily in menaphos and then insane final boss stuff so i've done about three quarters of god wars 2 hard mode i've done about 30 elite dungeon 1 and 30 elite dungeon 2 and 30 kilns and i've done a bunch of oh, wow. uh, and I've done a bunch of Dagonoth Kings. I've done, let's see how many Dagonoth Kings I've done. About right around 3,000 Dagonoth Kings. Ooh. Um, so I've just been been trying to trying to take those requirements off. Um, and then I finished God Wars Dungeon 1, except for I need the Auburn Lock from Commander Ziliana. But I've done all the hard mode God Wars 1, and I've got the other three pets and the next pet. So just slowly, slowly working on that. Oh, I've done a lot of Calphite King soloing, too. Um, but... You know, I just I haven't gotten very good luck with pets just yet, but hopefully they'll they'll come in in a big wave. You should sell those maces before they nerf them. <laughs> yeah, I probably the should. I probably should. I've been I've been keeping a loot tab for uh, insane final bosses, and my plan is to sell the entirety of the loot tab and then stake it. Uh huh. Okay. I'm hoping it'll be around <laughs> like. I'm hoping it'll be at least two bill. Okay. Wow. All right. He's come, he's a go. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. All righty, well. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was just saying, it, it hasn't been, it, it's it's definitely a grind. Um, it's definitely, definitely been a grind. It's not the kind of PVM I like doing. Uh, I'd rather just be doing Telos or, or Virago all day, but I'm doing like Dagonoth Kings and Commander Ziliana instead. Yeah. All right. Well then, with that being said, that's probably a good note to end this show on. Granted, we did go we did go a little bit uh, crazy with that, and it sounds like uh, the dogs are getting excited too. So, uh, big little alert! It's, uh, it's that's a good time to stop. So, thank you everybody for being here with us. If you want uh, full show notes, update dot rsbmb.com you can also uh, subscribe to us there on iTunes or Pocket Cast or Stitcher or any other um, podcast listener out there. You can. Uh, subscribe to the show with, with us there. So all of this there available on Google Play. Practically every podcast listener is out there. Just update.rspmb.com slash subscribe if you want to learn how to do that. We're also um, in-game at Bits Bytes. That's our friends chat if you want to play with us there. Uh, it's good fun. And, of course, uh, we'll be back next week for another episode of RSBNB Updates. So with that being said, take care, everyone. Nice to be back. Bye-bye.